Testing, testing, testing. Are we live? We're here. We're live. Walking up a hill, a jagged little pill. We all got dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been 10 months. The last time you saw me, I was in Mexico, sunburnt, commentating from a side room, getting needled by Doug Polk about my sunburn in the beautiful place of Cabo, watching Phil Ivey take down a heads-up tournament. I somehow got lost from poker for approximately 10 to 9 to 10 months, and uh, I kept getting the bat signal, kept going out there. I got even poker news. They made a sign with a bat signal, and I, I turned on Doug Polk's podcast. This guy's a fucking live vlogger now. He's live poker vlogger. I don't even know what, what reality I'm in, right? But this guy is doing the interview of the year, something I've never heard in my entire life with this guy, Martin and uh, talking about shamans and uh, putting acid in people's eyes. There's something about making out with a frog or something like that. I don't know what the fuck is going on, guys. And then today, I turned on a, a Bryn Kenny interview where he was discussing the allegations being made against him on the Doug Polk, the Supreme Leader podcast. And uh, listen, so Doug, he hit me up. He said, Poppy, do, do, do we got to react to this? I said, hey, you know what? I haven't done YouTube in a long time, but I'm ready to go. Let's get after it. Joining me today is a young gentleman that needs no introduction. We're going to give him an introduction anyway. He is the founder of Upswing Poker. He is, I don't know his relationship with CoinFlex yet, but we're going to find out. And uh, he's got that great green tank top going on here. He's the now recent co-owner of a, an official card room, The Lodge, down in Texas. Shout out to the boys down there for making that happen. He is the supreme leader, the challenge, and boss, very known for taking down Dan Negrano himself for that $1.2 million. And uh, listen, man, legend of poker, heads up legend, business legend. And uh, now getting into the podcast game, getting into covering this man does it all. We're joined by the supreme leader, Douglas K. Polk. Doug. What's going on? Welcome back to the show. How'd I do there? Joey, that, was a, that was a rusty one. Joey, that was phenomenal. Fantastic. And it really hit me how long you've been out of the game when you didn't know what CoinFlex was because that's that's been a, the name of the game for the last four or five months. But it, it, it is good to see you back. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much you want to dive into things outside of the, the, this specific investigation, but I knew that nothing could pull you back in like a good old fashioned investigation. Thank you. They had, they had, they, they had you at frog poison. Uh, listen, they definitely had me at frog poison. I don't know, man. When I saw you with the suit and the coat, sh listen, Sean Deeb sent me a Twitter message and he said, how many retweets does this have to get before you'll, I, I can come on the show and we can talk again. And I was like, man, if Sean Deeb is like doing retweet, like contest number giveaways, then I, I, something serious is going on. And then I saw you with the suit coat on and the pen. And I still don't know what the pen's all about, but I I, I was like, man, I, I watched some of that. I did a Twitch stream and okay, you're taking notes. What are you taking notes on during the show? One thing that I found when I do an interview or a podcast, whenever someone's talking and I think of something, I write it down because mm -hmm. sometimes if I'm trying to remember what I want to say, I'm not focused on them anymore. So if I take a note, I can just totally focus on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then I can come right back to what it is that I want to say and I can still listen to you. But you know, when you have something good or funny, you're going to say, but then you have to wait for them to finish. You get lost in those moments. And so I found that when I take notes, I, I can still kind of stay in the moment with that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I usually did a lot of notes with like the typing and the notepad. I'd always have a notepad up and kind of keep track of it like that. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's great to see you in the podcast game. Like you said, I kind of wanted to, I know I'm, I'm going to catch people up on what I've been up to. And, uh, you know, I've been deep into crypto. Basically, I started studying crypto back in July last year and investing and, and uh, NFTs. And then I went down a deep rabbit hole and I started just enjoying the time away from poker for a number of different reasons. One of the reasons being why we're here right now, which is we're discussing some allegations. And obviously, right, these allegations are are things that you hear over many years in poker in terms of what might be going on out there in terms of the ghosting stuff or the RTA stuff or people having more than one account in these games. And then some of these shady operators that might be um, you know, enabling some of these activities to take place. You know, these aren't, aren't brand new, these aren't new, right? These go back to as as long as poker online poker was created so kind of right now what we're discussing is the Bryn kenny allegations and he just did an interview a great interview on poker news with sarah herring and i see some people giving sarah herring a tough time but as someone who's been in the middle of these things it's not as easy as it seems to have to i guess grill someone especially someone that you've known like they've known each other for a long time so i know some people are very upset about that interview so 
did you get a chance to see the interview? I guess we, we could set the stage real quick for people that d haven't heard about the Bryn Kenny allegations, if you want to, Doug. Go ahead. Why don't you... Uh... Sure. So, quick breakdown. I'm sure a lot of people have already heard about the story, but basically, Bryn Kenny, one of his horses, Martin Zamani, came forward with a story. I did an interview where we talked about his experience playing for Bryn as a horse, talked about some of the personal stuff. There was a shaman experience. There was a psychic experience. There were uh, there were ghosting allegations. There were uh, multi-accounting allegations. Then there was the Lauren Roberts component of the story. He uh, supposedly played on her account and was fuel using her as sort of bait to chum in the water, if you will, to bring in the other regs in which he would back multiple of them to play against Lauren, who he was saying was her friend, while having other regs sort of swarm her accounts online and then sometimes debatably allegedly allegedly playing on that account during those sessions we also have a little bit of uh, private placement potentially legal issues where he's guaranteeing some 100x returns as, as according to a screenshot from lauren roberts then we also have potentially some kind of uh, potential money laundering situations going on apparently bring kenny had full back end access to some sites that have gaming licenses debatable as to how legal that would be. We have all kinds of stuff involved here, including a direct relationship to Sergey, forget the last guy's last name, who was banned from GG Poker, supposedly for RTA and or multi-accounting, but allegedly it is RTAing. A lot of different cheating angles here, a lot of different douchebag angles here. Fascinating story, and I'm excited to get into the interview that we had today, Joey. Damn, bro, you're fired the fuck up. I love this, man. I'm getting fired up right now. Listen, I do gotta say before we get, before we get into this, uh... You know, I gotta give Doug a big shout out. He's been working hard, man. I've known this guy for a long time. And uh, when I reflected on my time, you know, you think about the people that really helped you out and were really, uh, you know, people that were supporters of you on your side. And uh, I don't wanna cry, you know what I mean? I'm an emotional guy when I come back on some of these, when I come back, but I do wanna give Doug a big shout out. And, uh, you know, for always always uh, supporting people in poker, supporting, you know, especially myself as well over, my, over the years too, with, uh, you know, all things poker, upswing, friendship, so. I wish you back, bro. Before, before we get into that, and because uh, I know we're gonna get a pretty serious topic, and you know it doesn't make me happy because it's definitely one of the reasons why I stopped playing so much online poker, is because like the out of line activity is just fucking rampant out there, right? And especially what's going on on these browser sites, and with the poker bros and with the fucking the clubs, it's just so easy to get out of line in these activities, and there is no security. You guys gotta remember this: there's no security on these sites, so. You would think that when you go play on something more reputable like ACR or like GG Poker, which is more reputable than something like a Poker Bros, debatably, right? I guess we, some people might disagree with that. But you kind of expect that the operator is going to be looking out for you and looking out for your best interest. And Doug, so from what you're seeing and kind of, you know, you've been locked in here now for for some time. Like, do you feel, is that the case? Like, what's going on here? Is this RTA and is, 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 are all the sites, is it... Is it as rampant as I, I thought it was for a long time? Or what, what, are you, what are you thinking about this? It really depends on the game, but most specifically with the GG poker high roller situation. It does appear to me that we have a lot of different kinds of cheating happening simultaneously. We definitely have some RTA accusations. GG poker, well, not even accusations. I think it's confirmed. GG poker announced a year ago or so, a year and a half ago, that they had banned a long series of accounts. I think it was 30 accounts that played in these high roller events for RTA. Now, it's debatable as to what constitutes RTA. Were people getting banned because they had pre vault raise charts or were they getting banned because they had somebody breaking down a PO solver sim mid-hand? They all got kind of lumped in together, so we have to use a little bit of detective work to decide who exactly got banned for what. Was it multi-accounting for some of them? Was it RTA? Which thing was it? But regardless, when we're talking about this many accounts getting banned, certainly we have some rampant cheating in those games. I will make one note, which is... This is something that was brought to my attention by a, someone in the community recently where they talked about these games. There were players that did win in these games. There were some whales that lost seven or eight million dollars, even with wow. some of the cheating that was going on. Some of the better regulars still did manage to do quite well in these games. So it wasn't that nobody was winning. It's just that there was some share of cheating that would be essentially knocking your win rate down, almost like an additional rake. Some amount of RTA, some amount, some amount of multi-accounting, some amount of ghosting going on, all these things playing a role. So was it there? Yes. Was it frequent? Somewhat. But it didn't mean that you couldn't possibly win as a good player. Just an important note to differentiate. 
Yeah, I think that's something that people sometimes think is that if there is this out of line activity taking place, that it's impossible for anybody else to win. And I don't think that's true. You're always going to have people who are going to either run hot, going to be in good seats. Like as long as there's fun players in the game that are giving away money, then you're still going to have a chance to win. Now, long term, is that a position that you want to put yourself in consistently to be able to beat that game? Probably not. So don't, just because you play in a game and there is some winners doesn't necessarily mean a lot of stuff's happening. And so what you're saying, you're talking about the high roller scene on GG. And obviously, right, these guys are brand new. They used a very aggressive marketing strategy by acquiring some key ambassadors in different markets Ooh. around around the uh, around the world. And they were catering to these really high stakes games. And we don't really know where a lot of these, a lot of the whales playing there didn't seem to want to play on a site like a Poker Stars or they weren't on Party Poker as far as I know, they weren't on any other site that's accessible around these parts of the world. They were kind of just in the Asian market and it was kind of mysterious. You know, you don't really know where these things are coming from. So it sounds like, uh, and by the way, Bryn did do an interview with Sarah Herring where we can actually uh, maybe check some of it out, Doug, where he denied everything. So he said that Lauren, he never planned Lauren's account. He never, he's never seen anyone who's RTA. He's never heard of anybody RTAing before. Uh, he said he was just trying to help out Martin and you know, some of these guys might have like mental health issues or like they're just unhappy or they have like, they're trying to blackmail Bryn. So he came out, gave an interview with Sarah Harry in Hour Minutes on the Poker News channel. Links in the description below if you guys want to watch that. And uh, I did see you in the chat a little bit. By the way, if you ever see me in YouTube chat, that's not me. You can, there's someone like, you can make up accounts and be anyone. On, I could be Doug Polk Poker technically on, on YouTube chat. So what, what are kind of your thoughts, Doug, on, on that stuff, man? To hone in on a couple other aspects here, First off, there is some stolen agencies angle of this that I didn't mention earlier, where basically if you bring players into GG Poker, you get a share of their rake indefinitely, Bryn mm -hmm. knew a system in order, allegedly knew a system in order to revoke that and end up having that under him. So he would take your revenue, basically you bring in players, he eventually revokes that from you, according to these screenshots that we saw. And then also I wanted to just hone in when you said that whatever comment you had just made about Brandon RTA, because Sergey was was or is very close to Brand Brin's team, banned for RTA. How can Brin say that he doesn't know that's going on? If he did say that in the interview, that seems like it would be a bit of an overstep. I mean, I've been hearing about RTA since like, you know, the dream machine times, right? <laughs> I don't know how you don't hear about the, I don't know how you don't hear about it, right? Especially if you're that locked in, you're that hooked in. He was one of the first people that was really working with GG Poker. When GG Poker was going around and shopping and looking for people to collaborate with and partner with, Bryn Kenny was that guy that was there with GG Poker at the original point period of time. So when I see that, like, listen, if I'm working with a, with a company and I'm one of the first people involved with the company. And then all of a sudden, like, you know what I mean? It's just, you get access to certain opportunities, certain things. And Martin was actually on a pot. I, I talked to him as well too. I did Twitch stream there and he cup, he came in as well. And I was like, wow, I was, you know, not really prepared to kind of go down that deep of a rabbit hole. And he was talking about how he would be playing live poker in Florida, signing people up for gg at the table while he's playing on the ipad i'm like what's going on like you know it just all sounds like it all sounds like things we've heard all these rumors about but i've just never really seen someone just come out and say you know hey here's here's exactly how we go and then kind of Bryn's side where he comes out with the interview i mean it makes sense because i was wondering what is this guy gonna say is he just gonna like, we never heard anyone just come out and say like yeah you know here's what's going on except this other guy well look when i heard that Bryn was doing this interview on poker news and I want the record to show I invited Brent to come on my podcast, did not take me up on that. Wonder why. It ha I had flashbacks to the Postle situation. Now, I'm not saying that Brent and Postle are the same. Obviously, what Postle did was incredibly more blatant and went on for, well, maybe the length of time doesn't matter. That was much more blatant. Still, regardless, what I find in these situations for people in these spots, they don't want to come on my pod, Joey, because they don't want to get grilled and have someone actually hold their feet to the fire on what happened they want to have the softball layup they can disguise that however they want i'm not trying to insult sarah at all i actually have not yet watched this interview i had meetings during the day i had a video i was recording i was in a bunch of work i saw this going on i dropped by the chat for a second uh but the point is i find a lot of times people don't want to hop on and actually really have to deal with with the smoke you know 
Well, Doug, I'm going to be honest. I can see why Brent Kenny might not want to come on your podcast and have a one-on-one with you about these things due to the, you know, situations you guys had in the past. I mean, last year, at last I seen in Cabo, you guys were going to play like oh a million dollar, a million dollar heads up match. I don't know what the fuck is going on with you, dude. Honestly, I don't Sorry. know what you, what's happening. So I could see why he would be like, you know what? Maybe I don't go on this guy's podcast, right? Like, it Joey, makes sense to how me. happy was I during that Twitter exchange in Cabo? How happy? That might you, be, that might be one of my... That was a top 10 day for me, maybe ever, but certainly in poker. Yeah, I mean. I was crying, tears in my eyes. You were, you were pretty, you were pretty funny. Uh, you were pretty, you were, it was, it, it was, was an interesting time to, to be alive at, in the poker world at that point in time. There was a lot of fire going on, a lot of excitement. World Series got pushed back. And uh, for some reason, you and Brent, I don't know, you guys seem to, I would really love to see you two do an interview though, like do a, a heads up challenge. I know you just issued a, a challenge for the lodge. I mean. I, I think I did actually challenge him heads up Joey, and he told me that his friends would beat me up. For what? Well, he said I'm a total joke. Anyone could beat me. That's why his friends are going to come in, and, and, and they would totally kick my ass. His oh. friends could do it, though, because he's not going to waste his time. He's got better things to do. But his, bro- his friends, I'm a joke, man. They could beat me. Who's his carry friend, Anna just, just, I'm just, just carry on. Oh, okay. Okay, I was like, who are the friends? Yeah. So I, I guess in this situation, where do you, what, what do you like, you know, what do you think? What do you expect to happen out of this situation? I mean, we've seen this before. Like, you know, everyone just kind of goes quiet, right? No one. Bryn comes out. He gives a talk. Everyone else that's kind of associated with him, they're all going to come out. You know, take a very standard line, like you know, nothing happened, and you know, we didn't, we didn't see, we didn't, we didn't see nobody fucking art. We didn't never see anybody do anything like that, right? So, from your end and our side, what do you, what do you think exactly is the is what takes place from here. So Bryn comes out, he says that, now more people are gonna come out, they're gonna have more screenshots or more information, but you know, GG Poker, it's always the operators in these situations who they know what the fuck's going on, but they don't seem like they got much incentive to really come out and, and say much or really even get involved at all. So what do you kind of think should happen from here after what you've heard and then now hearing Bryn's denials of essentially everything that Martin, by the way, I don't think this guy Martin is the most like credible guy, you know, in terms of what he's saying. I'm, I'm, I'm taking everything everyone says with some suspicion, but you know, we, we don't know much about this guy. I don't know much about his history. So I can't necessarily say everything this guy's going to say. I'm, I'm, you know, it's just in the fucking CNN. I'm not watching the news and saying, oh, everything this guy says is fucking true because that's not, we know that that's not how this stuff works. So what's kind of your impression right now of where we stand and then where things might, might, or in your opinion should go. I think this is really important. We need to break down everything that happened into one of three categories because there there are so many accusations getting thrown around. Some are true, some are false. Probably we're getting bits of gray in all of these stories. But I think that it's important to drive them towards this sort of funnel, three separate funnels. There are three different kinds of things going on. The first kinds of thing we have going on are things that are illegal. Things like promising people 100x returns on their investment if they invest in your fund or your your company not legal to do so things like potentially some of the back end hypothetically money laundering we might be looking at on gg poker on party poker where this money is coming out of thin air on license site potentially also illegal for license sites to be doing that so that's one category the second category is cheating we have things like multi-accounting probably the lowest form of that, but still cheating nonetheless, ghosting, RTA, sharing whole cards, all of that kind of stuff. That's the second thing. And then we have a third category, which I like to call being a douche. And this includes (laughs) making people go to the shaman for frog poison, psychics, gaslighting people, making people, you know, run your errands and do your bidding, telling people ridiculous things like we're the superstar team. You're not in the all-star team. We're on the superstar team. I'm trying to spread light around the world, be part of the light that I'm spreading. I'm going to create the most positive change in the history of positive change or whatever the final quote was. Basically, just all around being a douche. So I think it's important while we're going through, as funny as the being a douche category is, and it is very funny in this instance, we need to really hone in on those first two items because that's really what's going to make a longstanding impact in terms of the repercussions of the scandal. Okay, so a lot to address there, and you kind of, you know, you put the great, to put the more intense part first, and then the last part. So just to touch on the, the douche part, right? Our, so one other way to look at this is like this guy is running his staking business, right? So and if he wants to run his staking business and make you go to the fucking shaman and make you, 
put yourself, I mean, you know, if he wants to send you to yoga, if you don't go, listen, Doug, can you imagine when you first backed me in 2008 and I said that, oh, you know, I didn't do yoga today and I ate, ate fucking McDonald's and you're like, oh, you got to play 10 cent, 25 cent. You can't play like one, two or two, four because you didn't do yoga or Taco Bell. To be honest, maybe it's not a bad idea to require your horses to have to do yoga and eat healthy to be yourself in a clear mindset. So on one end, I do kind of, I understand where he's coming from with that, but you know, how the Martin guys makes it sound like he makes it sound like he was this, you know, forced to do these things and he had to go here and had to go there and, and put himself in these uncomfortable situations. And I, I sort of just think it's a hiring issue where if you're going to hire someone as your horse and bring them on, then you probably just want to find someone that likes to do yoga and likes to go to the fucking shaman and likes to put themselves in uncomfortable situations around frogs and acid and like, you know, people that claim to be warlords and killers. So I think that that is just where the issue happens here. But we obviously know a lot of people that are employees of corporations or businesses that they don't like the, what they got to do with this situation. So I kind of see that on, on that end and maybe interested to hear your response. And then let's touch on number one and number two. For starters, if eating healthy was a prerequisite for the WCG Rider Poker Stable, one day of how much McDonald's you ate and you would have been kicked out. So you would have had no chance whatsoever to be in my stable. <laughs> It, it wouldn't have even been close. As for the hiring issue, kind of tough here, Joey, because here's the list you're telling me that he needs. He needs someone that's smart, loyal, does acid, is a gambler, winning, and is not, and then is a winning poker player. So you want smart, smart, intelligent people that are loyal that do acid and gamble. Tough. I didn't say it was an easy hiring oh. thing. I just said it, it sounds like we got it both issues, right? As from from a, a stakey. Obviously, we know the stakeys, right? When you're trying to get a stake, if you're down money, if you're used to playing these high stakes, you can definitely get desperate and you can start looking out there and you can put yourself in some situations with backers, right? This is very common in poker, very common in business where you take on investors who basically kind of just, they position themselves to own you in some ways and they make you do what you say. And then the more that you give them, the more that they're going to take in that situation. So I know that in poker, that relationship happens often where the stakey, I mean, we see this, you know, a lot, obviously, where the stakey feels like they're being told to do this, like, don't do this, don't do that. And it's like, it becomes this sort of like real controlling, demanding relationship. And uh, I mean, that's just how sometimes relationships go. So I, I'm, I, you could say, well, that shouldn't be treating them like that. But at the same time, right? I don't know. So what can, can you imagine for a moment having your existence be you're living with someone mm -hmm. who is consistently writing out little things that you do to your overlord who then puts you down in stakes because you ate Taco Bell and or because you didn't do your yoga. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to maybe hop in and look at some of the quotes from the inter? I've actually still not yet seen the interview. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then we'll touch more on uh, one and two, because one and two are obviously are very serious. So we kind of, you know, we're joking around about the three with the frog, the acid, stuff like that. But the first two. Actually, know, should trying to force someone to do acid, that could be illegal now that I'm thinking about it. I'm sure it is. I've never tried acid. Kinda, I don't know. Kinda, as, as, it, as, it, as it settles, as it sits on my tongue. Yeah. I mean, it is fucking weird, right? You take, you take, can you imagine like me and you, like I take you to the, the a shaman and the shaman goes like, you got to, and Think of for a lot, some people, if they don't know any better, if they don't know how to stand up for themselves and say no, which, you know, plenty of people don't know how to do that, then you might put yourself in that situation. So, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't really hear him at, talk about the shaman. I don't know much about the, the shaman with Brian. I don't know if he said in this interview, but I do want to give a shout out to Chad and Michael. Oh, three with donation. 6942. He says the band is back together. It was word we wouldn't see it again. The two of you discussing poker together is something the community always needs. Big shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. I see a lot of people out there showing a lot of love. Uh, I'll have more content coming in the future, probably talking more about what the hell I've been up to. It's mainly working with music and crypto and NFTs and investing and learning all about that and kind of getting more out into the world to see what else the world has to offer. And uh, and yeah, kind of keeping it short. So let's let's see if we can pull up this poker news interview. Watch a little bit of this with, with our girl, Sarah Herring. Shout out to Sarah and Bryn Kenny. Links in the description below. Let me try to adjust my screen. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, oh, I forgot. I didn't even realize it was on there. Hold on. Okay. Do, do. Hold on a second, guys. Let me see if I can get this fixed up. Bum, 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 bum. Let me see if I can pull me and Doug over here. I want to confirm a few things before we get started. People were asking about some of the receipts from Martin and some of the things I've personally received. I also know he's posted some of these things publicly, things that he has shown evidence of. 
He's shown evidence of Bryn threatening to actually kick one of his friends off a stake if he says anything publicly. So a little bit of blackmail going on there as well. We've seen evidence of him taking away people's agencies, the way that he does it, uh, as according to these screenshots from Martin. We've seen uh, a couple other things here. I had to think about at the top of my head. I saw some screenshots of Bryn saying to Martin that he is going to be ghosted today. And the guy that is going to be ghosting him will have half of his action. Now, the word he doesn't say is ghost. He says, X person's playing with you today. Half the stake goes on you. Half the stake goes on his. I don't oh, really, really see how you could take that other than the fact that that would be ghosting. But that screenshot also in the archives got a bunch of other stuff too. Those seem like the most interesting details. And then, of course, the funny quips that are more in the third category that we brought up earlier, but still, still fun for the whole family. So you have you're saying that you have these screenshots? Are they hosted somewhere? Or do you have these somewhere? What what? I so, think I think Martin posted them in some in a group chat. He's also sent them to me, but I do have some of these screenshots on file. He said it's okay if I show them, so I'm not throwing them under the bus at any capacity. And I also want the record to show because I've talked with a lot of people about this issue, some other issues. If you come forward to me with information, I will never out you or your information unless I get express consent. I've had some people that are worried I would do that. I will not do that. Exception being threatened to sue me. I will go public with that. So what? So you're saying that you got threatened to be sued by Bryn Kenny? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Before, so before this guy Martin came on your show, he what did he send you? Email? He sent you a text? Like what? What are you talking about? So what happened with that? Uh, he he hit me up on Telegram and let uh, me know the the good news. And you what did you say? You said fuck it. I'm gonna. I'm, I mean, I said okay. I could smell the views. You could smell the view. I mean, that's kind of what he said in the interview with Sarah. He said that basically you took on this like unqualified, like non-trustworthy source in Martin and basically ran with it to capitalize on the views for your content, for your channel, and because you might have some sort of vendetta against him. Don't get me wrong. I don't like Brent Kenny. Mm -hmm. But putting that to the side, this guy clearly has some truth to some of these stories and when someone comes forward with information like this i think that it's relevant to the community at large mm -hmm. it's an important issue and the story needs to be told mm -hmm. and it's not quite as bad again as the possible thing for sure but another example of that i think that people coming forward with these stories is good for poker it helps protect people it acts as a deterrent I can't even tell you how many times we've seen scammers in poker where no one came forward at any point and the result was they just kept scamming people Right. I think that we have an obligation to to come forward with our stories about what happens when you when you are screwed over in this industry. And there is this take of this is bad for poker because people see these things. They don't play. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's it's that viewpoint that has protected scammers for all of these years. I've never been quiet about getting scammed. Had the Brad Booth thing. I've had other issues that, as well. The hacking thing the too. Where the guy thing. snuck in your fucking house and put put something on your computer. Oh, a little Joshua Tyler action. Yeah. That's one of the crazy. I've, anyone I tell that story to, they're like, "What? Like, did he know the guy?" I'm like, "Yeah, he brought the guy." In. Like, I don't bring people in my in my place by my computer really, just because of that story. Because of how, you know, you 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 never suspect that you're gonna have someone that you're friendly with or that you're in a relationship with, business wise or anything wise, and then have them inside your house and they're gonna put something in your computer where they can access your information. And that was also something Martin talked about, where he talked about allegedly like. You know, and this was very, the evidence, the, the the thing he did to like gauge this, right? We don't, you know, who fucking knows, but he talked about that. And that's obviously something that you worry about. I mean, I worry about when I plan certain sites, like can the, does the site have access to information that's going on on the screen? And then what are they doing with that information? And, you know, that's a big reason why I don't play on like ACR, for example, is just because I don't, there's no fucking way I think that I'm getting a fair game at higher stakes cash games and ACR when you take into account this was before, right? I, I haven't played in a while. I don't know what's going on on there, right? You guys can correct me if, if things have gotten improved on there. And if my man Phil Nagy has been in the trenches trying to fix these three, the Eastern Europeans at one table sort of problem that they had for a very long time. Uh, you know, Doug, have you heard anything about the ACR? Are you, are you paying it? Is they on your radar for what you're doing right now? A ACR was always your neck of the woods, man. It's your turf. Your turf. It's now you're man. in the GG poker turf. Tell okay. me. I'm actually in the CoinFlex turf. I what is CoinFlex? Can you just t explain CoinFlex to me a little bit? Because I, I, on, I, I only see. I'm glad you asked, Joey. CoinFlex is a cryptocurrency derivatives exchange with groundbreaking yield products for you. FlexUSD brings you all the comfort 
of the security of a stablecoin brought to you in a cold wallet storage solution generating yield daily compounding every eight hours what on the eight hours huh? right into your wallet how do you do that they take an innovative repo market uh-huh and they pass on the yield of the exchange to you the end user by using their stablecoin flex usd if you have usdt guess what one year usdt 100k in your wallet guess what a year later 100k flex usd 110k do you like money if you like money you like coinflex head over now to coinflex.com legal disclaimer none of the information contained here constitutes an offer to buy or sell cryptocurrency so let me make sure i understand what you're saying right so what you're saying is that instead of putting the 100k usd by the way this is not a paid ad i know no, there's no <laughs> this isn't my first uh, crypto ad in the podcast technically but i guess it is uh did, so i give you 100k i put it in a savings account i get 0. 0.0 to return where in coinflex with and so instead of coinflex taking 18 percent cost on capital or some absorbent fee that the banks usually might take on your capital or make off your capital in this situation then you're able to pay out a 10 percent yield is that, is that what you're saying Roughly, yeah. It's so you take USDC. Uh -huh. You can mint Flex USDC, so it's all collateralized, uh -huh. right? So your only risk is if USDC depegs, which is very, very low. Okay. And so Flex USD at any point you can burn it back into USDC, so it's fully redeemable. Uh huh. And they have a repo market with short-term loans. That repo market has interest rates that are paid on to the people that have Flex USD. So basically, you don't need to have it on a protocol. You don't need to have it on an exchange. You have it in your wallet. Every single day, every eight hours, they just send you what is essentially free money. Again, the risk is the USDC DPEGs, very low risk. Right. Now, the yields have been a little bit lower lately than, than advertised, but sometimes they pop up, kind of depends on the market. But yeah, I mean, it, it really, if you're going to hold stable coins in your wallet, it is just simply a donk play to have USDC over Flex USD because really Flex USDC is fully redeemable for USDC. The, the only difference is that Flex USD pays you an, uh, an interest rate. Now, I guess what I would say is if you're doing DeFi stuff, you're in protocols, you can probably find better rates a lot of, a lot of times. But for people that just want to have it in their wallet and just not have to worry about it, it's just a slam dunk awesome option to make money you wouldn't be making otherwise. We, we, can, yeah. we can get into the interview. It's gonna, yeah, call. make makes sense. That sounds interesting. I mean, yeah, you, but, you might not believe this, Joey, but the audience has heard that the CoinFlex. Oh, the have Coinflex. they really? I've literally never heard this before. So is, sorry, guys. Have you heard this before? It's very, it's new to me. I, uh, you know, obviously, Doug Project, I'm always interested to see what this kid's up to. So if, uh, if uh, yeah, let's get in this interview, though, and uh, check it out. Do we, got, we don't got a link in the description, but I guess check out Coin. You got like a code or something? Like what's going on? Do you guys do no, things it's like not, that? No codes. You ain't giving these guys a promo? You got no giveaways? Are you kidding me? The king of giveaways don't got a giveaway for Coinflex? You can't give we've them 100, you can't give 100K away or something like that? One of these guys, what's going on? We've, we've done some giveaways in the past. We've done it. In fact, we can we can get it. No, I'm kidding. Let's go. Let's get. Let's, let's see what's going on here. I appreciate the spot. Yeah. Things that came and went, and always at the core of uh, who I am. I. So basically, it's so Sarah Herring. She's interviewing Bryn Kenny. She gives her intro right because she knows she's in a spot where everyone's going to be on here. The comments are going hard at Bryn. Like you know, he is not looking good in the public light right now because he hasn't really had a chance to speak. Hasn't really had a chance to share his side of the story. The information that came out against him did not paint him in a very positive light, and a bunch of people were making jokes about the fucking frog. So, uh, so Sarah coming into this, she knows she's in a tough spot. Like she's known Bryn for a long time. They've done a lot of interviews. I know Sarah. You know, it's easy to say from the outside, what's this girl thinking? Like, why would she not grill him and go inside stuff like that? So. You know, I understand that viewpoint, but I, I also empathize where she's coming from, too. So just to kind of get that out the way, I don't want people to be mean to Sarah in here. I really want to be honest and I want to... You want to say something about that, Doug? No, I'll go for it. Okay. Get to what the truth is. And and I hope that, that Bryn shares those sentiments. I think that he does. And so we're just going to dig in here, folks. And I know I'm just going to piss some people off, but I'm going to do the best I can here. And... Um, and I know that Bryn will as well. So let's just welcome on the man of the hour, Bryn Kenny. Hello, always nice to see you, Sarah. Uh, I sped it not up. Not the most pleasant circumstances this week, but you know, life gives you what it gives you and all you can do is manage that and not hope for something different. I am so with you. And I, you know, I reached out to you last week just to say that I hope that you're okay because I just think this is, um, you know, I think we all know that once things start getting spiraling out of control, especially in social media, uh, a lot of things get can get missed or overlooked or people come. I've seen it happen lots of times. People come with pitchforks and we've got to we've got to go <laughs> go for someone. Someone's got to got to um, lay on the sword, if you will. Um, but this situation is really unique because as it's all evolved, it didn't really start with you, but it feels like 
this is where the most quick um, pause it for a second traction has ended up yeah there. anytime anytime you want to stop anything just let's uh, uh let's let's make that happen yeah i i i feel like we're already we're already just kind of fluffing up the questions a bit this situation obviously didn't start with you you could argue pretty reasonably that he is the sole reason that this entire thing started he is the person that ha that takes these people he is the person that has the access behind the scenes he is the central focal point of why this happened so what is this it didn't really have anything to do with you i don't really understand that can you explain that to me um i mean she's just trying to make him look good well that's right. i mean or okay. maybe maybe i don't know like i'm not sure how much she knows about the situation she, right she might not she might like she sarah's not necessarily a poker player right she's not entrenched from see things the way that you're going to see them or I'm going to see them. So she's coming from a standpoint where she's hearing things, but we hear a lot of things in poker. So, you know, sometimes you want to get people that you know, especially the benefit of the doubt in that situation. So I think maybe that we're, that's where she's coming from, where maybe in her impression, she's thinking that Martin is the one that started this by coming out with it. And then Bryn sort of has to respond to these like allegations that don't make any sense. And then Lauren, you okay. know what I mean? So I, I, that's, that's kind of where I would imagine that she might so be coming the from. The breaking of the story, basically. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's still kind of a weird wording, but sure. Yeah, yeah is talking about you and your stables and your life. And so here we are. And I think I was trying to, to decide what would be the best way to sort of dig into all the things that we need to cover. And I thought for a lot of people who are already, you know, deep in the poker space and in the high roller community, they're already going to understand a lot of what we're talking about. But I think there's a lot of people who are interested or who are paying attention to what's happening, who maybe don't have as clear of an idea of how some things work. So I wanted to talk to you first of all, just about what it means to have, say, a stable of horses and what that looks like for people who do have this, um, where you find these people, how people tend to run their stables, how you ran your stable. Um, I mean, we could probably skip this, this part a, unless you think that it's important, that but he's just going to talk about stables general, right? Down. I don't see that much relevance yeah, if, so unless you want to dive into that. Career, I mean, I started playing poker in with friends at 15 years old and from 18 was really just loved, loved everything about poker and the experience. And I started to have success at an early age and I guess I, I really like I like action. I like helping people. So I started throughout my whole poker career. I've backed hundreds, if not a thousand or over a thousand people at different times. And usually and how that works is, is the backer would put up all of the money for that person to play. the. It was. Oh, he has. A, yeah, you're right. He talks about the stables here. It about maybe I, I don't, I don't see now. How have, that how have you part needing to be broken stable? down too specifically. Well, but. just like being someone that's like completely entrenched in the poker community, me traveling to tournaments all around the world, you would wind up meeting people that you played with online or just meeting people live for the first time. And then like someone told you that it was known that I would have a big stable, other people would know that in the poker community. So sometimes it would be friends of mine at the time that I was backing would recommend another friend of theirs to me. And when I was young, I was really... And these guys said they watched the first 30 minutes where there wasn't anything in it. So let's go past the first 30 minutes then. Because if you want to watch this, it is on the Great Poker News YouTube channel. It's links in the description below. Shout out to Sarah. Shout out to Poker News. Shout out to Jesse. Shout out to Chad, Laura. Everyone working hard at Poker News. Those guys are grinding hardcore. So we are big supporters of Poker News over here. I know Doug and uh, the Lodge as well, too, are, are supporters of Poker News. So big shout out to those guys. It's that added up right there. But at the same time, when I... 17 years or so maybe completely in the poker spotlight for the past 15 years and through it, all the people that know and all the people in the community i would say that if not the most i'm one of the most respected people in the industry I, for my work. no that's just not true what do you think you Is don't it, think he's one of the most respected people in the industry if you talk to all the big names not not that well respected first off he's not respected his poker talents not really that relevant but when i did my top five list not a single person said bring kenny Mm. There, do you want to? Can you give me some context on 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 who are you? Who are you talking to? Are you talking to Phil Ivey? Like high talking, stakes pros. Got it. Online pros, live pros. His game, I don't think, is that well respected amongst people. But putting that to the side, because clearly he means his image. I think if you ask a lot of people off the record what they thought about Bryn Kenny, they would say that they don't trust him and that he. I'm gonna leave it there. I would say if you asked a lot of high stakes pros off the record. I would imagine mm -hmm. that they would have some negative things to say about Bryn, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, I think people in the high stakes arena are very careful with what they say or don't say. They don't put themselves in bad spots. They don't want to be the center of focus and they don't want to prevent themselves from being able to get into some games. But I don't agree that Bryn has one of the most respected names. It's kind of a ridiculous thing to even say. Mm, okay. Like if you put up to a vote, what do you think? Would people say that Galfond or Bryn? Do you think they'd say it's close? Well, 
I mean, if we say the, 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 the most respected, right, that's one thing. If we say one of the most respected, if he, is this guy one of the most 50, 100 respected people in the industry? I mean, he is the top, the top money leader in the tournaments, right? And we could argue, right, what does that really mean? But at the same time, I think there are people who do respect that accomplishment, even though, you know, we know it doesn't necessarily count buy-ins and pieces and, you know, who, who right? So it's like, it isn't the necessarily the most accurate metric of success or determining anything for anybody. But a lot of people do use that as a metric and determine who they think is successful. And sometimes people I just see someone playing in high stakes consistently and automatically they assume, oh, high stakes, I must, you know what I mean? So... I, I'm I just saying. Like I'm that. just saying that I personally disagree with that statement, mm -hmm. and that also I think a large number of high stakes players would also disagree with that statement. So yeah. I just want the audience to realize that what Brent is saying here is very likely untrue. Okay, I think that's an important note as someone that is involved in the community. Word for following in my word. Uh, also, me being someone that's continuously been on a roller coaster in life, like financially. So there's a lot of people that just, you know, had a successful career and have never really been tested. Like I've been from rich to broke to negative millions back and forth all over again. And my word, everything has been tested throughout those years. And anyone that I've been in business with that has maybe loaned me money when I wound up in a spot like that, as soon as I got the money, it went directly to them. No one ever had to ask me anything. And that's always been the most important thing to me by far is my word and operating in the cleanest way possible because you know it's, it's something that's so important to me like, even, even in my career you know and, and to say that um you know doing something untold or some type of cheating in these small stake satellites it's effectively saying that okay here i'm gambling for millions of dollars and doing business for millions of dollars but and my reputation my word is so important and has been so strong for, for forever and you know here i am stealing thousands of dollars it, it, it doesn't make any sense at all for a person who cares about these things and their word and reputation is so important to them like you know i'll, I'll just give can i can i, I can i possibly just make a note here yeah, yeah i think that one thing that i've seen a lot from people that are either in gray areas or unethical and, and sometimes sometimes not sometimes they, they're just very conceited and narcissistic but one thing that i see constantly is when people say, I'm doing for millions of dollars, I make millions of dollars here, I have all this money, this is for not much money, I have a lot of money, I'm doing all this big money stuff, I have a money, I have jet, I have a lot of money, you, you don't, I'm, I have the money. Mm -hmm. People like that, you should typically get a little bit of a red flag with, because that's usually posturing to show that they're a big deal. And, mm -hmm. and Brent's definitely correct in what he's saying here, he has played for millions of dollars, no doubt about it. But it's just a weird, it's a weird, it's one of those things where when I see people saying things like that, as a viewer, you should say to yourself, why is he so obsessed with the amount of money, right? Why is he so obsessed with this number of millions? And even within the story, the amount of money at stake, when Martin says he thinks that at points, Brim was making $2 million a week, given some of the agency stuff, it also makes you wonder, well, it's not just thousands of dollars at stake here. It could be potentially millions, given the stakes of all these things combined. And so just trying to be like, this is millions, those are thousands. I, I just think that's a relatively weak argument. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people that I meet in Vegas do a lot of that, right? Like it's it's sort of like a business development strategy where you want to signal to someone else that you're working in this sort of bracket and you're trying to find like the people that maybe are like you or that work in that bracket. So I've uh, I found a lot of people use that immediately, right? They, they talk about money and the people they know. I mean, it's like a helmet strategy, right? So this guy... This guy's in that whole world of investing and taking equity positions in companies just because he's got a big name and then bringing these people to his events and his game and his charity stuff, right? From from leveraging his name as poker success and kind of playing those high stakes and stuff like that. So I, I think that that's not an uncommon strategy that I see people use in poker and in business. But obviously what you're saying, I 100% agree with that. When people start talking about stuff like that, you know, I'm immediately like a little bit, you know, put off not to say that it's always going to be a Fugazi, but... Right, so let's continue. Yeah, on. I yeah. totally agree. I to parade myself about the things that I do well and for others in this life, I let my actions speak for themselves and I don't care for any recognition for, for helping others or for the good that I do. But in the start of 2019, I found myself in a spot where I had my first ever losing year in 2018. I was in about three and a half million dollars in makeup and I owed about another million dollars on the side. So the person, so I, I started the deal uh, with the person who was backing me at the end of 2017, after I had a really big year and kind of had a bad run from the start of that backing until the start of 2019 and like that year and a quarter or so. So in the start of 2019, that person says to me, hey, um, I think that this three and a half million that you're down, like the number is too big. And, you know, I'm willing just to, to wipe the number clean and to start our stake back at zero. 
And this is someone that I had no money at the time. I had no, it's not like I had assets or property. I had nothing. I, I needed to win five and a half million dollars just to get even at that point. And before the person could get the words out of their mouth, I told them that there's no chance that I would accept that because for me, like a deal in my word is just so much, so much deeper than I think maybe others, uh, others feel theirs. And it's always been so important to me. So for me, it was when we came into this agreement in 2017, it was for high stakes games. So in my mind, it's very, it's very easy to lose three and a half million when the tournaments that you're playing are hundred thousand dollar buy in $250,000 buy in, you know, maybe half a million dollars uh, on the stake and a million dollar buy in or so. So it's not like a, it's, it's a bunch of big tournaments that added up right there. But at the same time, when I got into that deal, I see myself as someone that's strong and that can get through that adversity and, because it's like that deal and every deal that I make is like a bond for me and my word and what I believe in. So if I were to accept like washing that money, it's almost like to me, it would mean that what happened was too insurmountable for me and I couldn't get through it and it was too much and too difficult. Whereas on the contrary, before that, uh, con before that conversation ended, I say, hey, I said, hey, you know, don't worry. Guys at 1.5 speed, if you need me to slow it down, let me know. I can put it at 1.25. I'm in a great mental state and I'm going to be number one in the world again this year. Okay, so this, I think, leads into what we do need to cover the Lauren Roberts stuff for sure. But before that, I kind of want to finish some of the things that Zamani brought up and just specifically then address those, such as what do you say to the accusation that you could see his screen? And I do think Doug, Doug like pointed out a few holes in his theory, but I just want you to address it. Could you see? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Okay. I mean, it's, it's one of the craziest things that I've ever heard in my life and has absolutely zero truth to it. Okay, so then I feel like we also have to address this um, image of your screen, which contains TeamViewer and v NordVPN. I think lots of people have at least VPN on their computer. Can you explain TeamViewer? Is there a good reason for you to have these things on and running? Well, like... Team viewer just have, like uh, when you have it downloaded, it's just something that like pops up when you turn on your screen, and you know it's a, it's a useful tool for you know being able to have communication with people. Uh, while at the same time, I was not I was absolutely not using Team Viewer. The people who do business with me know that I don't even have the time. I make that very Let's pause clear for a second here. What you think? So, so the first thing, the the seeing Martin's screen thing. I think I'm going to. I think I actually mainly agree with Brent on this one because I just don't think that there is enough evidence here to, to the screen viewing thing. I know Martin feels strongly about it. Mm -hmm. I just think if, if someone owed me 40k, I would be following up with them fairly regularly if it was relevant to our business, to what we were doing as a business. So I didn't find that argument to be particularly convincing. And then I think that his initial response here to the team viewer thing is just he's just not he's not wording his position very clearly and he's doing a bad job of it. Mm -hmm. But it is not unreasonable as a poker player to have team viewer for things that are not cheating. Like for example, when I had to stable back in the day, I oftentimes coached people using team viewer because you'd have them show up their screen, you could pull up the hands, you go through them. That's not cheating. So just because he has team viewer and a VPN next to it, not cheating, VPNs are also used for lots of things as well. Now how bad of an answer it seems like he's giving here where he's stumbling around and can't clearly essentially say these things it looks a lot more suspicious and maybe just the fact that he knows that this doesn't look good is contributing to why he seems kind of nervous in this answer but i i i don't think that there is a huge huge deal to having team viewer and or vpn your computer although those would be tools you would also use to cheat there are valid reasons why you could be using those tools too yeah i see what you're saying and, and also like He's got. You got to be nervous in this situation. I mean, if you, he's, they said they're doing it live, and there wasn't any like pre-planned discussion on things, so you know, I think in the moment when you don't really know what's coming, and you are being extra careful in Bryn's position, right? Like he's trying to find the words to say. So you know, I I, I, I can understand why he would be a little bit nervous like that too. So I'm not gonna necessarily like uh, really kind of focus on that, but I, I mean, I, I definitely understand what you're saying. And then about the team viewer thing as well too. All we did see was a screenshot, and, and yeah. Like you said, Team Viewer is a pretty commonly used program by people. So, and, still funny uh, though. <laughs> you find everything funny. <laughs> You're so fired up, kid. Oh my god, I love it. You're like at the pen. You're like, man, the shoulders are going. What's some of these shoulder workout you're doing? Are you, man? Are you uh, here? I don't even. I don't have the time to really <laughs> work on it. coach them at all. Let alone do anything untold in in that regard. So, I mean, these are things that people have on their computer. For instance, you know, going going into my my uh, my home computer because something's logged in there when I'm away from my house. It's something that can be useful in 
wasn't being used for any any type of wrongdoings at all. Pause. Okay. I and think so for you. I think it would be you. nice for him to use to give a couple examples there because the way he sa said that just it just sounded so needlessly. It's for example if my home computer had things in there that I needed to get out for whatever reason there it just the way that he maybe give an example or something I don't know I don't know. It's food for thought. Yeah. Keep going on. That and maybe sometimes you're coaching people or I don't, I don't have TeamViewer on my computer. I didn't even know what it was. I do have VPN software. So what would, what are would reasons why people in poker would have this that are non-nefarious? For those who are watching who don't really understand, does that make sense? Good I question. To, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just really trying to think because I've, I've given such little coaching to people like over the past few years, because I really have, you know, been like uh, balancing my time with other stuff. So I've, I've always, I've made it so clear that, you know, Hey, if I'm going to back someone, I believe in that person and I'm going to give them the, the proper tools to try to be successful in poker. But as you know, the people, as anyone who I've dealt with recently can attest, I've really given no time at all to, to coach people outside a game inside a game. Absolutely not. But what I would, I would connect them with other friends or better players and set up sometimes group lessons for them to to join and to work on their game. So Which why does I he think have we also need to, before we move to the Lauren stuff, we need to address. I think, I think Sarah actually asked a couple of really good questions there, but I think, I think she should have followed up here a little more aggressively with, okay, as so you're not coaching people, what are you using this program for? I think that would have been a reasonable follow up. But overall, yeah. I think she did a good job there. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty easy question to answer if you're using it for whatever you're using it for, right? So it should be a nice, I, I guess it makes sense, right? If you, if you know what you're using it for, if you access files on your computer or some shit like that. It, it's actually kind of funny to me that I, I, I almost feel like what happened here was Bryn felt like the heat was getting too close. And so rather than take a really easy way out, which would have been, I coach people, he took the, the oh, I don't have time for coaching people. Okay, well then what's the team viewer for? <laughs> What do, what do we have team viewer for if we're not? I, I, again, I, I think it's not that unreasonable to have, but just kind of a strange, sort of a strange question. And I think I think a follow-up question for the actual usage there would have, would have gone at least mm -hmm. to, uh, somewhat of a way. Address then the accusations about Sergei Reichik and what your you know relationship is with him. He has since um, sent some things that Martin Zamani had, had sent him after um, the sort of showered this WSOP event, but do you want to just address um, some of the Sergey yeah, stuff? Absolutely, because Ser Sergey's a good friend of mine, and I think he's a really honest and, and good person. And from my personal you know, view of him, he's someone that works as hard or harder than anyone inside the inside the poker world. When, when he was playing in high stakes tournaments, every hour that he wasn't playing, he would be studying on the side. So being someone that, you know, really I think is such a good person and has put in so much work to the game. You know, I, I've asked Sergi to do coaching for people because I, Sergi I see as uh, one of the best in the world, a world-class player. And I would ask him to give assistance to, uh, of course, during group sessions that are accounted also that Martin's been a part of, there would be group sessions that would be set up once a week sometimes with with Sergi or with Bert Stevens, where these were the guys who were the best players who I staked. And I was trying to get, I would say that goes in line with trying to give the tools to anyone that's close to me or in business with me to be successful. And sometimes even the people that were in those calls were people that I wasn't backing at the time, but just people that I liked and wanted to help them progress in their poker career. I pause it. I think, okay, so I what think do you that, say? I don't know if she does or not, but if Serge is a good guy and he's your friend and, you know, apparently is studying on the side during tournaments when he's not playing, why is it on the side then if it's during the tournaments or if it's not during the tournaments? Mm -hmm. Kind of confusing sentence. Yeah, he studies on the side every t all the time when the tournaments aren't going. Well, then why is it on the side? Why isn't it? What he's I, I can almost... It, it pulls up an image that Martin said where he said Serge would have his laptop on the side with Sims he'd run in the hands. And I'm picturing that as he's saying this, mm -hmm. and I feel like I feel like it's just a, it's a somewhat strange thing to say regarding that. But putting that to the side, why is I think the most important thing here is Sergey got banned on GG, right? For supposedly RTA, it was part of the RTA band wave. 
I think his account's last games logged, as far as what I recall and what someone sent me, were right around the time of the ban wave. So if he's part of this wave that gets banned for RTA, money confiscated, and by the way, I think that there were a couple of different levels of bans. I think there was money confiscated or non-confiscated. I think confiscated was more egregious than non-confiscated. Then my question becomes, Sergey's such a great guy. He's not. He's a great player. Why was he banned? If the money was confiscated, why was the money confiscated? And as a backer, I just think that there is some serious implication for you there because think about it like this. Let's just say you're the kind of player that it needs a stake. Are you also the kind of player that's a super high stakes crusher using RTA? No. It's kind of hard for the backer to not be involved in situations where a player playing for them using their money is using RTA and they don't know about it. Not impossible, but just a very strange series of events that I think deserves a follow-up question here. I don't know if Sarah does or not. Mm. So, what you, so what you're saying is that you think that if you're using the RTA and you're so good that... Well, I mean, a lot, don't a lot of these players are, are getting staked in these events and they are still pretty good players, right? I mean, I think a lot of people would agree they're they're pretty good players. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I, I do see what you're saying, but at the same time, like a lot of winning players I know get staked for whatever reason that they have. Maybe mental health issues. They can't handle playing on their own money. Like, you know, maybe they got a good deal out of the staking too. Now, what you're saying is that wouldn't the backer know that that person's doing it? I wouldn't, met maybe, maybe not though, depending on how deep you are. And I've, I have, I've heard other players, right? They've come out and they've said, you know, they weren't doing that shit on GG Poker. Obviously, a lot of people didn't come on and say anything because they were doing they were doing the RTA on GG Poker. So you know, I I, I do see where you're coming from with that as well. So that does that does make some sense. A to the um, allegations, basically that Sergey was ghosting for Zamani. Well, you know, okay. So when you're someone who backs like a lot of people, of course you can't be in every bit of conversation of detail. So on this trip. Uh, Martin went, Martin was there and getting coaching from Sergi outside of the game. And on this particular night, and I'm, I'm just saying what Sergi and Martin have said to me, Sergi was out with his, his wife to dinner and Martin sent him a message saying, Hey, I'm deep in this tournament, you know, can you come over? And I think they both admitted that that's exactly what happened, but that's like, that's the, at no point did I tell, instruct that that's what he should do, that either of them should do that in this circumstances. I've said the opposite actually. And. You know, it's something that happened between the two of them. And from all that Martin said, it happened one night and over, it might have happened between three to four hands or so. So, you know, if, if that was something that was, you know, prevalent, that let's say on this trip, if I were to say, okay, this is what I want you to do when you're when you're deep in a tournament, like, you know, call Sergi and have him help you. Then throughout that month, there would have been much more occurrences than just this one occurrence for a few hands. Um, and actually the week after this hand, uh, Martin actually wound up three-handed in a 10K tournament, um, and with three people left and having a good stack equal to the two other guys, he somehow got all in with seven deuce off suit or seven deuce suited. And it's like at these times you see when people are playing for like a lot of money and you know giving no care for your money and just outright playing bad or careless, you know you start to rethink being in business with these people. So. You know, while Martin was Martin was in the same building as Sergi at on this trip for a whole month, and all that he could, all that he said was that Sergi helped him in this one tournament, and which he requested him to do. And during the time, I have zero knowledge of, and did, didn't ask for a request. Hold on, hold on. Okay, full fucking shit. He says in this clip that we just watched, he said that they he did the ghosting, and I said he should do the opposite. And then he ends this clip with. I didn't even know. You mm -hmm. notice that? Mm -hmm. You want to replay that? Where he says this and then the end bit? One who backs like a lot of people, of course you can't be in every bit of conversation of detail. So on this trip, uh, Martin went. Martin was there and getting coaching from Sergi outside of the game. And on this particular night, and I'm, I'm just saying what Sergi and Martin have said to me, Sergi was out with his, his wife to dinner and Martin sent him a message saying, Hey, I'm deep in this tournament. You know, can you come over? And I think they both admitted that that's exactly what happened. But that's like that's the at no point did I tell instruct that that's what he should do. That either of them should do that in this circumstances. I've said the opposite actually. And, he said the opposite you know, actually. That happened between so he says he told him not to go, not to not to go over there and help him out. Okay, then why at the end does he say he doesn't know what happened? Why at the end does he say he didn't know what happened? Let me see what he said. 
them. And from all that Martin said, it happened one night and over, it might have happened between three to four hands or so. So, you know, if, if that was something that was, you know, prevalent, that let's say on this trip, if I were to say, okay, this is what I want you to do when you're when you're deep in a tournament, like, you know, call Sergi and have him help you. Then throughout that month, there would have been much more occurrences than just this one occurrence for a few hands. Um, and actually the week after this hand, uh, Martin actually wound up three handed in a 10K tournament um, and with three people left and having a good stack equal to the two other guys, he somehow got all in with seven deuce off suit or seven deuce suited. And it's like at these times you see when people are playing for like a lot of money and, you know, giving no care for your money and just outright playing bad or careless, you know, you start to rethink being in business with these people. So, you know, while Martin was Martin was in the same building as Sergi at, on this trip for a whole month, and all that he could, all that he said was that Sergi helped him in this one tournament at the end, which he requested him to do. And during the time, I had zero knowledge of, and did, didn't ask or request any of that to happen. So he had zero knowledge of it, but he also said the opposite. Yeah, it sounds like he said that he told him not to go over there, so he had knowledge of what was going on. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it but he didn't have knowledge. Right, but he didn't have knowledge. Yeah, but he said the opposite. Right. He said, "Don't do it," but I don't know about this. Have you ever heard of that? Someone asking someone to come by one one time, and then I mean, it happens when people go deep, right? They have a friend come by, or they have people come by, and sometimes I mean, usually most people don't want them anyone to help them out. So what Martin's saying is that he was specifically instructed that in certain tournaments or depending on who who the ghost is or how the setup is that the ghost would have to come in and then take over on these deep runs as like a standard formality so we're very different here with what Bryn's saying and what with martin saying i mean this is basically like two different galaxies of of you know opinions on how these things are going down Has, was there any text messages i remember i remember you talked about some text message wasn't a text did you say there was something related to this about about this issue, like a ghost would take over or something like that with the screenshots that uh, that you saw? Yeah, there was. There was a message from Bryn to Martin where he said, this person is gonna, going to play with you, mm -hmm. or you want to take that, half your buy-ins on his stake, half's on yours. Mm -hmm. That's a Bryn message to Martin. Mm -hmm. But I guess like the main thing I'm saying here is it's just not a congruent story. He's overly trying to show how little he knew where he's saying, I didn't even know about this, but I also said the opposite. Mm -hmm. He's just trying to say, look at look at how innocent I am. Look at all these innocent things. Just kind of a weird story. Yeah, I mean, he's I, trying, I, don't, I don't see why he would say that. Yeah, he's just trying to. I mean, he's trying to tell a story. I don't know, right? I think when you when you think like, you know, they're not telling the story how I might tell it or how it should be told doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that this guy isn't isn't being honest about what he's saying. So, I, but I, I'm obviously right. I understand where you're coming from too. I'm just playing a lot of devil's advocate on these things because I know how easy it is just to kind of, you know, take the stance that you're taking on these things too. Okay. And so one of the implications of that conversation also was that Sergey was using real-time assistance, which he has said that he was not. Um, although he did say that, and I think this is also an interesting conversation that we as a poker community need to probably hash out anyways in some ways, um, was that sort of what real-time assistance is, is something that kind of has shifted in our conversations a lot and what's okay to use and not okay is also kind of um, maybe gray in, in some areas. And so he says he did not use, like open up his laptop and use real-time assistance. Um, Zamani claims that he did. Is this something that you've seen, witnessed? Is this something that you would help facilitate i think a lot of the solvers and things are extremely expensive if i'm i, I might yeah, so maybe you can help I, understand I, I i've never seen Sergi use any of this stuff so basically how it works with some of these rtas is it really you don't you wouldn't you wouldn't always just pay an expensive fee so there's some sort of profit sharing fee when you know the operators you might be able to get better deals so it really depends on the business relationship that you have with the person who is operating or creating or running the network that a lot of these things go through with the rta so it's not necessarily that it is expensive depending on the deal that you get, but it, it right when you're winning money, if you have profit share deal, then you can win a lot of profit. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Just to kind of clarify a little bit on what Sarah's saying about the, the software and what this is. I've never heard it being used, that he was using it from any of our close friends that have been around him much more than Martin. He knows that personally I'm completely against doing anything like that and Really, I believe I believe him 100% when he says that he hasn't used any of this real-time assistance. And like you were saying about these conversations, you know, sites have different ideas of if you can 
use pr certain pre-flop charts like while you're playing that you know it's a gray area that it's okay from this side and it's unaddressed from this side and it's okay from this one and I'm pretty sure he admitted to using some of these pre-flop charts and that, that's also something that I had no knowledge of not to say that you know I'm saying oh you know it's so bad for you to use it but at the same time I had no knowledge that he was using an anything inside the game and if I did him and anyone else that's close to me would say that I would have adamantly been against it. And so what was your response when he was kicked out of GG? And for what reason was it made known that he was not allowed to use GG anymore? Really, I didn't believe I, I believe I didn't believe any of it. And I started to ask for more information that I kind of didn't get any more information. And just from the claims that he made, it seems that he asked uh, GG Poker for all the hands that he played because he was sure that he could prove that he wasn't using real time assistance with the game and the style that he has. So he's never really been, been able, been offered the opportunity to, to clear himself in this regard. And you know, I, I, I haven't personally seen anything with my own eyes or heard anything from a reliable source that's seen it with their own eyes that he was doing anything like this. Okay. Oh my gosh. There's so. So he's never seen from a reliable source. So he's saying Martin's not reliable. Well, I guess, so this is kind of interesting because now you have you have two sides. You have two sides saying that Sergei cheated. You have the site itself banning him for RTA mm -hmm. and you have Martin's account. On the other side, you have Sergei and Bryn. So it's not like Martin's completely unsubstantiated here. Like if Martin was, it was just his story then it would be a little bit more of a he said, she said, but the site banned him. Mm -hmm. So when Martin says, look, this guy had RTA up on the side, he would ghost people in the stable. And then the site says, you're banned for RTA. And then Bryn says he didn't. Who, who, who you got, Joey? Who mm -hmm. you got? Who do I got? I mean, listen, sites never ban people. So when they ban someone, usually they got a pretty good understanding of why they're doing it. And it seems to me, is this Sergey guy back on GG Poker right now? Is he still banned? Do we know if he's, st did he get back on? Like, did he convince people that he wasn't? Because in this situation, if he's friends with Bryn or being staked by Bryn, Bryn has direct access to the people who make these decisions at GG Poker. So if it was a situation where this guy is just, he's staking the guy or he's working with the guy, this guy's like his main coach and he's not cheating, you'd think that he could make a call and maybe get the guy back in the game. Even if someone gets banned on this site, at least two years ago, I don't know what it's like today, how much faith can you really have that he doesn't just get another account? Because it seems like Bryn's account at that time, you know, Bryn eventually was either banned from GG or lost his agency power or whatever. I think he got banned from GG, actually. Could be I, I would I, I would imagine there was some something happened. I mean, it sounds right. It sounds like there may have been some shit happening. GG, you know, maybe they got sick of it. Who knows what happened? They... They got rid of that agreement, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could find out more about that with those guys. So, so yeah, so I guess this, he says he never really heard about anyone RTA and or, or he's never seen anybody doing it, so. Mm. Still, okay. I know we're on. deep in this, and there's still so many things. <laughs> um, I feel like we at least, I want to flush out some of the stuff with the stables and the satellites and things like that, um, but I also want to... Um, tackle some of this Lauren Roberts stuff. And I feel like while we're on the subject of talking about ghosting and- Did you say Bryn Kenny's banned from GG Poker, Doug? Is that what you just said? I think I heard that. I could be wrong. Well, I haven't, I don't, I, I, I haven't is that, that. Is that, is that unconfirmed? But unconfirmed, I'm yeah, sure I, don't, can... I, don't, I don't know if he's banned from GG Poker, no. Maybe he lost his agency. I know that there was a, there was a drastic change in the relationship between Bryn Kenny and GG Poker about one and a half years ago. Okay. Yeah, we got to find out more about that then. That this isn't something that you um, would have approved or encouraged in your stable. Lauren has made a lot of allegations, one of which is you ghosting on her account. And she has said that you told her that she won a poker tournament and that suddenly she had less makeup or something along those lines. I think she said, um, magically, our number went down after she won a tournament. Um, so what would you say to that allegation and well she's 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 made another allegation that kind of that doesn't that doesn't connect to each other at all so you know a she has it here saying that i was ghosting on her account while there's a screenshot of her account losing i think 2.2 million on a straight 
like down decline, while at the same time making a claim that I was, whatever word, taking advantage of her being in games and having all my horses like kind of hunt her. So I don't understand how, you know, one side she can say that I was playing on her account, but then on the other side I was having people hunt her because she was, you know, a, a weak player. I mean, so I think this, the allegation is thing. basically that you were like playing that that you were having your horses take money from her, and then also periodically taking money back from your horses. Yeah, but I, that's what I mean. It, it goes in line to be something so crazy because you know inside that Martin was saying that in these satellites, I would that he he should call like the players with any two cards, and you know th this doesn't make any sense. You're not going to actually make. What what does that have to do with her question? Yeah, it's, this is this one's. She asked. She yeah. she asked. It. By the way, I gotta say, I gotta get some props, because I was very worried about what this interview would be like. I think I think Sarah's actually done a, a pretty good job here mm -hmm. of of asking tough questions and not being afraid to 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 kind of ask things that are uncomfortable. I do hope that she she grills them a little bit here because simply just totally avoided the question i think it doesn't it doesn't necessarily like the, the whole the argument is that you are playing on the fun player account because everyone thinks you're a fun player and then you play like you play like someone who's who's a, a god at the game so you in that situation like just it makes complete sense it in fact it makes a lot of sense that you would do that like somebody would do that because now you have this fun player who you've helped help bring on the site and you're helping to facilitate losing over 2.2 million dollars on a straight line down just like you said and then if you're in a game like that, and I, I there are people that I know people that do this. That's what, this is how the home game scene is run. Is like you put your three friends in the game, and then you bring a couple whales, and you guys basically heat the main backer. That usually the person that runs the game is the person who is in a position to make a nice profit because you bring in a couple really bad losing players into the game. So this is like a very common setup you see. In, totally. In like, this isn't like, it's not preposterous. So in this situation, normally I can't go to the private game and be like, hey, I'm this person. And everyone's like, oh, look, it's that guy. And then I play differently. Whereas on GG, obviously you can just, or any online poker, you could just log on the other person's name and it would make complete sense to do that. And in fact, it would probably give you a pretty nice advantage when people are thinking that you usually play bad. Now we didn't see any, Definitely. you know what I mean? So like that, that argument right there, you know, I think that. Well, you know. Also just the line of questioning, she says, okay, so people are accusing you of basically leading Lauren Roberts into playing versus all these good players. And then simultaneously sometimes playing on her account. And then he answers with, with a Martin playing bad story. Yeah, because Martin Martin talked about that, right? He's basically saying, "Why would I tell this guy?" I mean, it's kind of they kind of goes against, right? You may, maybe want to tell this guy to do that for a number of reasons to get the games to run, to right, to build the rake, and there, there was some talked about how he would collect part of the rake too, so he was incentivized to potentially build these games and then put more players in. And this is once again, this is not uncommon that I've heard sites do is that they want to fill volume, they want to fill action, they need liquidity. Well, where do they go find liquidity from? They find liquidity from stables. So this happens at all stakes of poker, to my knowledge, on some of the sites. Now, in certain situations, the deals might differ and uh, the relationship between the stable and the guild and the actual operator is gonna be different as well, depending on who you're working with. So. You know, there's a lot of a lot of elements to what this whole part of things, which I think is start where it starts to get real interesting. And uh, and yeah, so now we kind of heard that answer. Any follow up to that, Doug? No, okay. Money, if you like, em employ this strategy, and you know, why would I ever want to move money from one side to the other? And that would also mean that I had multiple people involved in you know this complex scenario that really makes no sense. While at the same time, you know, me and Lauren for a period, I, I think it was four years ago, I would say that Lauren was my best friend like four years ago. We were we were spending a lot of time together. She was she was nice to offer me a room to stay in her house and she loved poker and we would we would talk about poker all day and we would have good laughs and we went on multiple trips around the world and I was trying to do the same thing. I was trying to recommend to her people that could help enhance her life in terms of, of health and even doctors and try to offer her coaching from people who I was taking and I was giving her coaching myself for no, for no incentive. So the other thing is Lauren can't say that I ever had any piece of, of her at any point. So I had no financial gain by her in doing anything. And at the same time, when people make 
accusations hold of, on you know, pause losing yeah pause this is this it might be true but is misleading so we know based on the lauren roberts texts that she either did owe Bryn money or does owe Bryn money one or the other mm -hmm. those are very it's very clear from the exchange that she posted on twitter so when he says i had no financial incentive here it's actually not true and that doesn't mean he did it but he would obviously have a financial incentive for lauren to win money in those games because now she doesn't have to pay she doesn't owe him as much and if he's worried about her balance doing this makes it so her balance is lower she owes him less and then those debts transfer into either other players that aren't related to him or his horses that he can make up in other ways mm. so there definitely is a financial incentive there mm -hmm. and then another questionable thing here and i i think i heard this earlier someone sent me and i i'm sure it ties in somehow at some point, I think he put Sergey's stake on Lauren's tab. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. <coughs> he gave the Sergey stake to Lauren. Why would he do that Why if he had no that? fight? It doesn't make any sense. I think it's in this interview somewhere. We'll, we'll find out eventually. Is that possible? You just take the you take the makeup and move it on somebody else? I've never heard of that in my life. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I guess if you put the debt to someone else, it can make some sense, yeah. Let's keep it moving money the thing is lauren never actually by the way shout out to everybody in chat we got four thousand people watching live joe ingram one doug polk poker back in the scene i know i've been gone for a long time appreciate everyone coming in the chat giving showing a lot of love josh uh i saw your comments thank you guys very much and uh we'll talk more about that uh in the future but yeah let's get back to this great interview i like that you, did, you didn't say our names you said joe ingram one and doug polk poker <laughs> I know, yeah i'm like uh, i'm rusty because the, they, they wouldn't know our names joe you gotta give them the, the handle who are these guys in the tank tops and where did they come from i've never seen them before <laughs> and, and what's cornflex <laughs> and why does this guy got a picture of brett Favre wearing a football or holding a football in the background just a great player and i think we should remember him for all of the times that he had a career <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Why would you have Brett Favre in the back? Sometimes people, when they're good at something, they don't know what they want to do with their life. They decide that they should hang up the gloves, but then they realize they got to come back. Uh huh. And then sometimes they realize that they actually want to hang up the gloves, but then they realize they want to come back. Okay. And then sometimes it's me and Brett Favre. Whatever, dude. Whatever you're saying, I'm gonna go with it, dog. Okay. That's that sounds questionable. Let me pause the fucking video right now. It sounds questionable. Why would this guy have Brett Favre in the background? I don't know what that means. I don't know. Some things to think about here. Shout out to Tom Wheaton in the chat, my man Tom. And I see Skull Mike, the Lodge Live. Shout out to Skull Mike. Make sure you pick up a Skull Pass. And uh, let's, let's, let's run it. The money that she lost, she still owes me a, a huge amount of money that I've. You know, she showed some some messages of me asking for it. Okay, press pause again. Okay. Still, still owes him a huge amount of money, mm -hmm. so does have a financial incentive. Again, doesn't mean he did it, mm -hmm. but it does mean that the financial incentive part is not true. He has a specific financial incentive for her to be winning money from that point forward on GG. I mean, let's Only. think about right. You always want the person that's down straight line two point two million to win. Why would you? That's that's the person. Well, but you... here he's he's kind of liable for it, right? Because there's a bit of an agency system going on. Oh, on GG. okay, 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 okay. And so so, she, so he's fronting the money in some capacity. Uh -huh. So he needs her to pay him when she loses. So he has a direct mm, financial yeah, incentive that makes, here. That makes a lot more sense what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you have the opposite of a financial. You have exactly have that. Yeah, I mean, you could also say right, it's. I mean, it's easy to argue, I guess, against if you wanted to, but I see what you're saying, right? You well, it doesn't it doesn't mean he did it. It just means that it's not true that he doesn't have a financial incentive, right? Let's keep it moving. Yeah, it's it's yeah, some, some you know, life is humbling, and sometimes you can't understand things because from her side, you know, she's she sees herself as you know this victim that I took advantage of, but in reality, you know, that that couldn't be less true. I was. You know, I offered her to, to stake Sergi with me at one point because she was losing a lot of money on GG. So I started letting her have action that she never paid for either. So her the amount that she was losing of 2.2 million, I wound up making back for her about 1.5 million of our our stake of Sergi, uh, her buying pieces of me. And she- All right, so I, I was also, she was Once again, financial incentive and it's a weird system where someone owes you money, so you put your horse on her stake? Mm hmm What are your thoughts on that, Joey? I mean, why would you do that? 
why would I put, let's say you're, let's say you're down a million and then another person's down a million. Why would I, why would I put your stake on their person's stake and then clear your number? Because you believe that you're going to get the Sergey money back because you know, he's a good player. Uh, makes sense. I could see that. Yeah. In theory, hypothetically. I'm I mean, saying. I could think of some out of line reasons why you might want to do what you're talking about. If you have access to more than one account in a game, potentially and stuff like that, like then they're, you know, maybe there are some reasons why you might want to keep a person playing. You might want to keep them in the game. I mean, there are rebates given to players who are losing a lot of money. It is a common thing that you might do. You might give someone, I know it's casinos, right? They give someone, might give someone 50,000 to come play and then they lose that 50K and then they lose another 150K too. So there is a system that hosts use. And obviously Bryn said he's been staking people a long time. It sounds like he's been hosting games a long time. Like this guy is a sharp guy when it comes to hosting. So there might be some sort of strategies that you use with certain people to maybe make a better, mend the relationship. Or, I mean, it sounds like they had a good relationship, right? He said he was sleeping in her fucking house. Like they're having sleepovers. I don't know what's going on in this house, but you know, it's kind of, this is fucked up. First Joey, of all. does it involve 5 a.m. in a bed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Bro, it's a, it's a, that is a, that is a, that is a subtle throwback that I don't know if many people are going to get, but when they do get it, they're going to enjoy it. So uh, shout out to you if you know what the hell that's talking about. That goes back to a first thing. But I mean, it's it's crazy in poker. You see these things happen where a new player comes, recreational player, player successful in their, in their area of life. And they come to poker and then they make friends and they make friends with these great high stakes poker players who are so fucking cool. And they're so nice and they're eating great food and they're flying on a fucking plane and they're you know they're on tv and it's very easy for people to like really glorify that and put them on a pedestal and like say oh my god like you're on fucking tv you're so cool right this happens all the time as well and it's happened for many many years and then those people build relationships all of a sudden those people seem to play in the same poker games the poker games tend to be high stakes you know sometimes you're hanging out with them you're taking them to a fucking baseball game like these things are once again very normal things to have take place. So kind of hear that it went to this route, even allegedly, and now she thinks that. I mean, it's really kind of fucked up, Doug. What do you, I mean, what do you think about that, man? Because that 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 on its own, I mean, like I said, I, I know it's 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 kind of how you could say how high stakes pokers ran under that model and under different degrees of building so, relationships. And people obviously complained about this for a long time with the private game world. Can I give Bryn Kenny some props? Yeah, of course. Here. Yeah. Because he has built up an incredible system of ways to make money around him. Think about all the ways Bryn's making money. He's making money, probably involved in ownership of GG Poker in some capacity. Maybe not, but let's just assume he is. Then he can make tournaments where a set, I, I assume he's getting a portion of the rake, if not a majority of the rake, some degree of rake. So when these events run, he gets paid. Then he has horses that play for him that in theory make money and help the games run which makes him more money then there are people whether he knows it or not getting banned for using rta so they're probably pretty good in the games that they're playing then some of his stakes are staking or ghosting other stakes he even said this happened once so the worst stakes are now better because the better players are ghosting them he makes money from them the stakes have stakes makes money from them Brings in whales into the games. I assume he's playing in the games. Then when the whale plays, his stakes beat the whale, makes money again. And then hypothetically, according to potentially accusations, he then plays on Lauren's account and makes money from his stakes, making him money through their stake stakes with the rake that they're paying to the site that he owns part of. It's fucking genius. Genius. Sam, I'm going back in hibernation. That's that's crazy. I mean, I guess that's a really interesting way to put it, right? Is that, you know, most players play poker and they just want to get in a fair game and have a nice competition and, you know, try to win some money. But what you're describing is you just laid out, you know, 10 ways. And 50, man, that's pretty sick, man. You're making money while your money makes your money's money. Right. That's the way you get rich. That's how you get big money. You don't want to be chasing that small money, Joey. <laughs> you got to be chasing the big money. Because uh, yeah, big yeah. money this, changes. This sounds stuff. like how the corporate world works. I don't know. It sounds like what they're doing out there in the. In the uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for a 100x in my private placement. Are you so you invested money? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do you see the Lauren Roberts tweet where she talked about where she showed when Bryn texted her and said it's gonna for sure 100x or something like that? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, but I mean, I know how I get a lot. I know a lot of people that hype up their investments like that. So that's uh. Well, it's also illegal. Mm, well, but 
he said, is there, he said. Fractional that, banking 101. Sounds like the Federal Reserve has entered into the chat right now. The company is going to 100X and would love for you to have a piece, but still I need something towards our side number. By the way, company is going to 100X, cannot raise money like that. Even if 100K to invest the company, 100K to go off on our number would be fine. And that will turn to 10 million, I'm sure of that. If you want to or don't, up to you one offer. I love the, the casual ending line. Joey, I'm gonna make you $10 million right now. Send me 200K. I'm gonna make you, it's gonna be 10 million. It will be 10 million, up to you. Hmm. <laughs> that, sounds what's like, the ending sounds like there? the pulse chain, pulse chain advertising with your man, your guy, Richard Hart. That's what he said, uh, sacrifice, uh, man. Your, sacrifice your money to pulse chain and pulse X and you'll end up getting a 10,000 X return. Everyone <laughs> still to be determined. We'll see when they come online. But yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, right? It is, you know, yeah. Brent, should get, he should get, I mean, if you have that mindset, you should get NFTs because NFTs, some of these are actually hundred X and so you could sell the bullshit better in that world too and you might have a, a media chance to get your 100x return if you if you you know that's a lot of scam are you, are you paying attention to those scams doug what's happening in crypto yeah i've dabbled Dude, it's crazy bro i mean you've dabbled in the past that they're crazy with nft stuff people rug I got, pulling i got a few whammon you got a few in the works for the crypto channel no i got some whammon oh world of whammon you familiar oh yeah it's future, with, uh, future yeah. of art I mean, debatable, but yeah, I see. I know you're saying, yeah, they work with CAA. It's so. Highly debatable. Highly debatable. Yeah, your girl Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, and Reese Witherspoon, the the lead celebrity female ambassadors, working with uh, your man Guy O'Siri from CAA on that one. I think so. Yeah, I've looked. Are you, at are you are you talking about National Treasure, Reese Witherspoon? I am. I am. Yeah. Yeah. You you just make sure to put respect on her name. Anyway, we can get back to this. <laughs> for large amounts of money on party poker she would ask me at times to pay off her debts from you know this game or that game and she really she never paid any of the money that she actually lost from from gg so i don't understand you know the predator approach and that's something that you know it's tough for me to see wait can you pause that for a second she never paid any of the money she lost on gg correct he just said that she lost the 2.2 and then never cleared never paid that debt up is what sounds like what he's saying she never paid any of the 2.2 she lost. Oh man, that's. Yeah, it sounds like he's saying that she was asking him to pay off other debt that she may have had. And then also that he or she didn't clear the number on GG. That's what I see at times to pay off her debts from, you know, this game or that game. And she really, she never paid any of the money that she actually lost from from GG. So I don't understand you know, the predator approach. And that's something that, you know, it's tough for me to see because I mean, it's so, it's so against my character to take advantage of, of anyone. And you know, I'm always so generous and giving and caring. And during this time, me and Lauren would go on trips. I would pay for the room, Spare me. fly on some private jets with me. You know, we would go to dinners, I would pay for it. So, I mean, even in my poker career, when I had no money and I was negative, it's like all the people that ever hung around me, like I would really, pay for their life. And if they were struggling through hard times, I would loan them money for it. So, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's messages that contradict each other continuously in these allegations where it's saying, you know, here's one thing. I mean, that classic biz dev, what you, how you develop business is you do, this is how it works, right? You take them, this is liter literally how it works. You take them to dinner and you take them on ice planes. That's how it works. So that's, I, that's a I, common strategy. I, Go ahead. I just want to make a point, Joey. Yeah. Can I just, make it a point in my life to uh -oh. never hang out with somebody that loves to brag about their private jet. If you have a private jet, I'm, I'm, we're cool. Yeah. But if you like to go on to talk shows or podcasts mm -hmm. and talk about your private jet mm -hmm. and how generous you are with your private jet, the muggle class can board and breathe your air. <laughs> I just never, I never want to hang out with you. Can we, can we just, can we just make it a hard no? Just, all right. Perkins all got a one. private jet, but he don't really talk about it in interviews. Breathe, breathe our air in my private jet. So Speaking kind. Speaking of Bill Perkins, we got the Bill Perkins yacht, a little throwback right here on the screen from uh, from the Doug Polk for Stand and Grano Challenge. The gorilla comes in, big pot. Shout out to Bill Perkins. He was uh, he was a very nice contributor during the uh, during the the GTO headquarters here in Las Vegas, Nevada. As well, throw that in there too as we hop back to the scene right here. Our gorilla, gorilla gaming, Glenn on the stream. Shout out to gorilla gaming, working very hard. Shout out to World Series of Poker at Bally's this year. And uh, I got a lot to learn. Did you know Phil Helmuth won a fucking bracelet? Are you kidding me? That guy won a. This guy is running poker, bro. 
Phil Hellmuth is on Poker Go every day and he won another bracelet. This guy, debatably, is he... I don't know, whatever. Another story for another time. You already reported on that, Doug, right? I'm sure you did a great video talking about how he's a fucking god, right? Yeah, well, in between trips on my jet, sometimes <laughs> okay. I get a little bit of time on the computer and, you know, the gas, the fueling, it takes time and it's expensive. <laughs> and I guess I just realized as I was hanging out with well-known celebrities that just think I'm the man that <laughs> I really do embody the American dream and lifelong success. And I just want to give that gift in between private jet trips onto you, the good people, and show how generous I am with my lavish lifestyle. Damn. I mean, you are kind of living the American dream if we, if we be honest about it, but let's move on to this interview here. Here's the, you know, something that doesn't make, have this make any sense. So what happened with Lauren? I mean, that's what I think is confusing also. So you guys were very close friends and clearly something happened and she is pissed off. I mean, um, you know, I don't really like, I, I prefer not to talk about, you know, other people really, but you know, our, our relationship just, it, it changed a little bit. I, I met my girlfriend at that time and maybe, in, maybe it was about a month period where I was hanging out at Lauren's house and we were spending all day together, hanging out, laughing, you know, talking poker. <laughs> and then, you know, she what? <laughs> was so funny about that. They're hanging out, they're friends. We spent all day together hanging out, laughing. <laughs> I just, isn't that, I mean, it's just, it's just it's funny like thing to say. Joey, if we hang out, I don't say we hung out together, having a good time, laughing. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just funny to me. Can I, can I not enjoy a good moment on the, on the interview? <laughs> just let me enjoy this. Let me have this one I'm thing. Let, I'm, let, I'm letting you, I'm letting you enjoy. You go ahead, man. You know, he's hanging out laughing. Okay. We're hanging out laughing right now. Wouldn't you describe our, 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 this conversation like that? Yeah. <laughs> True. She would kind of get jealous of, of my girlfriend, of her not going on certain trips, that you know, she kind of thought that she should have an invite to every trip that I ever went on. And it, kind of, it, it, it turned into something that, w that started to get much more uncomfortable for me. And at the same, for someone who, you know, I've always paid my own way. So when you say, you know, Lauren and her husband let me stay, at their house it's not like i needed to stay at their house i just i like them and it was a nice comfortable setting for me and it worked but at this then when i bro started come on that's a normal he didn't want to stay at a fucking hotel it's smoky there the hookers are coming by he wanted to stay at the beautiful mansion of the of the of, of lauren and her husband i actually think i've been out to dinner with her husband a couple of times shout out to joel he's uh he's the man so oh yeah leaving for more and not staying as much it's like the the energy and the relationship like started shifting into somewhat of a, of a toxic way that, you know, anyone who was privy to our relationship and everything that happened, you know, people like my mom and, cl and close friends. That, Actually, pause you know, it. About this is why it's funny to me to say that. Okay. If you say you stayed with someone, no one thinks it's because you needed to. Mm -hmm. So when he says, I stayed at her place, not because I needed to, it was just a very comfortable situation. It's why, you, dude. No one thinks that the number one earner in the in the history of tournaments needed to stay at someone's house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why? That's not anyone's mind. So it's just weird to say that. That's mm -hmm. why I'm laughing. Okay, you can carry on. Okay. Our relationship and everything that was going on, you know, that's the, the unfortunate way that that things turned. So she seemed to suggest also that you're fairly loose with the accounting within your stable or that it wasn't very clear. Um, what would you say to that? I mean, loose is, I don't know about loose. You know, when you do, when you're doing business with a lot of people, you might not have, I'm, I'm not a person, you know, an accountant would have spreadsheets and they would show every single date, every debit or credit that made it to result in the number that it is today. Me, I would have, I would have a number and I would update it anytime that there was a plus or a minus from that number. And in like that picture where she showed, you know, I, I think it's pretty clear accounting when I sent her a picture of her losses on GG, you know, that's full detailed accounting. And then at the same time, you know, saying that your number is much, much less than that number. I mean, I see that as a cop out of someone not wanting to pay the, the debt that they have, trying to find the reason that, you know, it's not their fault or they didn't do something wrong. So it, I think maybe I, I need- Also to actually, just to say this too, Lauren clearly should have paid her debt. 
I don't mm-hmm. want that to fly under the radar. If you are given credit in this system and lose two million, you owe two million. Now we don't know the exact extent of what she did or didn't pay. He's saying that she didn't pay any. Apparently, some money was made back. Mm-hmm. I don't understand, understand, but I don't want to absolve Lauren of any wrongdoing if she, in fact, did get a credit line and didn't pay. That, that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. Understand better. Also, um, I was under the impression when I started seeing um, Lauren Roberts come into these high roller events and things that she was a very wealthy businesswoman, as we've seen plenty of these well, people. Well, that's that's the same thing that she presented to me. She would make claims to me about having all this money herself personally, and that she had, you know, been a successful trader for all this time. But then, you know, as I as I see now, you know, I think that she would, you know, fabricate truths of her own success and her own ability to gamble and to play. Whereas I know that she lost she lost a lot of money playing poker. And I know that it wasn't at least most of it wasn't her money. And I know for a fact that that person who it was her money said that she couldn't play any more poker, said it to other people. So you know, maybe because she sees her poker, her poker, her poker life as, you know, maybe a failure. Maybe she was expecting to be someone like me. She would even make claims like she was asking if, if I could ask the person <laughs> who was backing me if they would back her in the same games. And the person who was backing me, they thought that I was best in the world. And that's why they were backing me for these large buy in live tournaments. So I think she has a, she created a misconception of her own poker skill and because her career has been so unsuccessful i think she's trying to grasp for reasons of why it was unsuccessful other than a poor understanding of her own skill and the games that she was playing in with the bankroll that she had what are your thoughts on that joey you break it down for me for once I mean, listen, I think it's very normal for a fun player novice to the community or a recreational player, right, to lose a lot of money and think some fucked up shit's happening, right? Now, I don't know her own financial position or the state of things going on there, uh, so I can't really speak on anything like that, but I could definitely see it where somebody comes in, they don't know any better, they've had success outside of poker, they're playing high stakes, they think that they belong, you know how these high stakes players are, the... The players who lose money, they got big egos, they got a lot of confidence, they uh, obviously right overrate their own abilities to learn things, to get better at things, stuff like that. So they come in and Bryn said that from his staker, his backer gave him, he was backing him fully. Maybe she thought, you know, hey, I should get that same respect. Like I'm just as good as Bryn and she didn't get that, you know, so now she's upset or that's kind of sounds like what he sounds like he's saying to me and, and she thought she was Bryn and he's saying like, you know, I'm the fucking best. And obviously, you're not the best. So that's kind of my my interpretation of what I'm taking away from that. What what do you what do you think? What are you thinking, Doug? I think that seems reasonable. I do think that that part of an element here is that basically Lauren has some problems here too, for sure. And I mean, so so does Martin, of course. Some of the situations Martin was in were his fault. A lot of them were not. But I think what adds to the story and what makes it so deep and so layered is that there are a lot of issues with people across the board. I just think that for Bryn, it weighs much more heavily because he is the the focal point of the story. He is the central figure. He is the person that has the biggest name in the story and the most to lose and was seemingly involved in a bunch of different stuff here. So I I guess where I'm driving this is I think that if what Bryn says about Lauren is true, I think those are some very legitimate criticisms of Lauren. But it's also a bit tough now because we're getting into he said, she said stuff. Right. And it's it's just a little bit difficult. It's better when the stories corroborate each other with multiple sources and or sites banning people because then you actually have something substantial that you can go off of. Like, for example, if... And I don't know what Lauren's take on this is, but if Lauren said, I paid... And Brent said she didn't pay. Well, then it becomes who, what, what, who can we really believe, right? Just one person's word versus the other. But once you add in other accounts, I think that's really the difference in proving some of these allegations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what we're gonna have to do. Is to, I mean, you kind of said you already talked to other people and stuff like that. It seems like more people are. I think Lauren is gonna do something. I just saw in the chat with Solve for Why. So you know, I'm sure that 
as deep as you want to dive into this, Doug, then uh, you're going to be able to dive deep because I don't think this is the end of this story yet so far in terms of finding out more information and stuff like that. So, and uh, I might do an interview with Bryn. I guess maybe you never know. We'll see. I've had him on the podcast in the past a bunch of times. So I'd love to maybe, depending on how deep I want to get back into this. So let's keep it moving on. I know you got to go. You said 35 minutes. 35 minutes. Okay. okay. So you're saying the allegations from her are false and mostly maybe because of a salty relationship in the end and then some like financial debts potentially that are just never going to be paid. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, she, she posted a bunch of pictures of trying to make me look bad, but there were also just pictures of, of me asking her six months, 12 months, a year and a half after, you know, just if she could pay me some small amount of money because what happened was is, so I gave Lauren, so Lauren owed me a bunch of money from this GG and I offered, because she was claiming that she had all, all of this money herself, I wanted to do the right thing and help her make some of that back so she wasn't losing as much. So I offered her a deal to to be my partner to back Sergi with me for all the games that he plays. The, 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 real, the, the real thing that left the sour taste in my mouth is since she was unable to pay even just the, the $700,000 debt that she has right now, it means that when she owed me $2.2 million, she accepted a deal that she was free rolling me for more millions because it's a similar type of thing. Sergi was playing $25,000, $100,000 tournaments. It would have been very reasonable for him to lose $1, to $3 million straight, which really was more money than I could afford at the time. But I was banking on, you know, that she, if, if things went wrong, that she would be able to pay what Sergi lost and be able to pay some of the money towards the money that she lost on GG. But since she wasn't even able to pay me smaller amounts in increments and me, you know, trying to be nice and respectful in the ways, it seems like she really had no way to pay any of this money, which, you know, I would argue that in this in this scenario, she was the one who was a predator. I mean, she was there free rolling me for millions of dollars when I was supposed to be her best friend and living in her house. And her can I can I pause with some breaking news? Best friend many times. You got breaking news. I have breaking news. What, what do you got? I have a screenshot here okay. of a conversation between Martin and Sergey. OK, where Sergey says. So basically, Bryn wanted to end Sergey's stake. Mm -hmm. Sergey said to Martin, he didn't tell me why specifically, but he did say he saw multiple instances of my screen with charts. And then a couple other things here. Mm -hmm. But basically confirming that he did see him using charts while he was playing. Mm -hmm. The reason we know it's while he was playing is why else is someone's going to cut you would you cut them if they were using charts? After a session, someone is pulling up some charts. You're going to cut them. What are you studying? You're done. Mm. What is this, the Phil Hummy stable? No, I'm just kidding. But back, but back to the serious matters. Why else would Bryn cut him if he saw multiple instances of a screen with charts? Meanwhile, he also says in this interview, saying, I never saw from any reputable sources or heard any reputable sources he cheated. Mm -hmm. So is it one or is it the other? Mm -hmm. Did you see him with charts and according to Sergey, he did? Or is it true in this interview? Why mm -hmm. would Sergey lie and say that he had charts and Bryn saw them? Mm -hmm. Why would he lie? I don't know. Read the documents on file. It seems like a throwback too. Let's keep it moving here. We got about, uh, yeah, I want to get through this before you got to go. I mean... Honestly, I, I see it as in that scenario, really, I, I was the sucker and the one to get taken advantage of. Okay, so I feel like we need to dig a little deeper into some of the things that Zamani said that it seems like some other people might have um, validated. And this you touched on a little bit, but in talking about some of these, the satellites, some of the overlays and talking about putting your team in and I think the uh, quote was do what's best for the team. Um, can you? Yeah, I think kind of going back to what you just said about the charts in, earlier in this interview, he did talk about how it wasn't clear on some sites if you could use charts, if you couldn't use charts or anything like that. And I think he was referring to what you're talking about, about the RTA where he hadn't seen or heard RTA. And so I, I don't know if he, they consider charts and RTA the same thing. I mean, I, I think of them as different things. Well, regardless, Sergey's Bryn saying he's gonna drop Sergey from the stake, mm -hmm. and he doesn't sell. And he says to him, 
he saw multiple instances of your screen with charts. Mm -hmm. How can we take that any other way than he had charts up while he was playing? Yeah, it's true. It was us cheating. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I think about uh, pre-flop charts and then real time assistance and later streets. I kind of I kind of separate them in my mind, but basically, right, what, what I see what you're saying too. So that makes sense. Speak to that and- he, does, he, he, he scoured through his whole messages between me and him. And there's not a single thing that says, do what's best for the team. So he might've had some understanding of himself personally, but I never said to anyone, do what's best for the team. You know, it's it's everyone is playing for themselves. I tweeted the, I tweeted the evidence, by the way. It's going to affect them. So there's there's definitely no layer that you're expected or supposed to do anything other than play your best game. And then it's up to that person to do whatever that means for them. And in these satellites, like I said earlier, the, guy, the people that he listed are huge losers on the site. And I would say that I was careless about putting people into games that were above their skill level because it was a time that GG's guarantees were growing and you know for big guarantee tournaments to run and to hit the guarantee so that you can hit more you need satellites to run so you know did I have forces of mine start these satellites to make sure that they ran for sure I did but absolutely none of them were instructed to do anything wrong in any way from me at any point I mean, I have a, there's a there's a chat log here from Martin with Bryn that says X person is going to play with you today, half your stake, half his. How 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 can he refute that anyway? That's clearly doing something wrong. It's directly from Bryn. And that sounds like it's what Martin was talking about, where basically he said that the players had to work together. Like, let's imagine we're playing a team, and I right, like I, me and you are based on a team, is what this guy would say. He would say he's on. We don't know how many accounts were in the game or how many horses it was in one game. Uh, maybe he clarified that with you. I'm not sure. But basically what he's saying, and, and if you guys don't know any better, I've told some people that don't play poker this story. They're like, yeah, like, why wouldn't you play with other people in the game? Like, well, that's not really the rules of poker, the spirit of poker and, and how poker works and how a lot of these poker sites write their terms of service is that you're not supposed to play that way. So that's why a lot of people have a big issue with that. Whereas other people who aren't familiar with poker are like, yeah, why would you not play with people? Because they think it's kind of like a, a meme. From what I'm seeing too, so I find that I find that connection interesting between how poker players and people who take the game seriously see it, and then how another entire group of class of people think it, that's like the fun part of the game is like working together with other people to to take money from people. So, well, it's different when you're playing one two than when you're playing competitive twenty five k's with high rollers. I mean, those are different environments. Yeah, it's obviously fine to go down to your local because you know with some buddies to play one two as mm -hmm. long as you're not colluding. Yeah. It's very different to have a stable of people playing together in 25 Ks. Yeah, I mean, I think people play the, together in these things too. I've heard a lot about that as well. So let's keep this moving. Can you speak a little bit to your relationship with Gigi? Um, yeah, I, I would call my, I would say that I started out with Gigi as an ambassador. I translated that deal into something more like an affiliate deal. And I, I would say, influenced and advised them on the tournaments that we should run the guarantees the satellite schedules for them and help them scale their business from what they were when i started to what they are today okay and so you're departing from them is amicable was amicable well there, there's a whole thing that says online that i was you know dropped as an ambassador or something or fired from gg there couldn't be that couldn't be less true of a statement i'm the one who told gg that it was time that my ambassador deal was over so it was nothing on their side they there was nothing going on wrong in any way that they cut me off i still have communications with the person who runs that tournament team with the ceo of that company they asked me advice in 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 different areas and there's been no no bad there's there's been nothing bad that's happened and i've never had yeah like i wasn't dropped as an ambassador my account on gg poker is still live i could play with it it's never been frozen suspended at any time and other than sergi not another person that i do business with has been frozen or suspended at any time okay so i feel like we just have to ask some questions just to make sure we have like super clear answers yes or no have you ever ghosted on Lauren Roberts or anyone else's account? 
I mean, you know, I've had a poker career for like 17 years. Have I been you know, <laughs> in the same room with someone and been poker and oh, sorry. You know, advise them in a hand or two or, or some hands? I've, the last thing I'm going to do is is claim that I've never helped anyone while they're playing. You know, it's been a 17 year career, and you know, like we were saying before, you learn you learn along the road of, of what's right and what's not. But absolutely, I never had an operation that was based on a scheme of ghosting. And if I were helping people, it would be because I was next to that person at the time and giving them coaching lessons and had no financial incentive or gain for myself. Wait, hold on. He's saying that he's saying so, that he, he that he used to. He's saying how, that over the course of the career that, that used to happen, but in this situation, there wasn't an intricate scheme where, as Martin described on the Doug Polk podcast, where it was like a, you know, that was the business model was you guys all work together and, and we do this like that. That's my impression of what he's saying. So he's saying it was never a scheme and he never had financial incentive. But then who are the people that he's next to during these tournaments? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I don't think, uh, I don't think Chidwick is like, hey, hey, Bryn, get over here. Let's, uh, what do you think on the turn? I don't think Justin Bonomo goes, uh, Br Bryn, you, you, how's your 14 big one? Can you, can you help me out with a jam? Okay. So who are the people that he's sitting next to helping that he, quote, doesn't have a financial incentive? Does Bryn fully understand what financial incentive means? That could be a good maybe. question. Does not, doesn't understand that one fully. It's possible, I think. Mm -hmm. But good. at the same time, he could have just said, if it, if it wasn't true, he could have said, I did not. He well, didn't. He's not saying it ain't true. He's saying that it's happened, but in this particular situation, it's not what's going on here. That was my impression of what you just said. Maybe not this instance specifically, but it has, has happened before when you're in she the said, room with people. She said, yes or no, did you play on her account? His response was, in my poker career of 17 years, there have been many instances where I was or around or wasn't around other people and may or may not have said something right. or seen yeah. something. I, mean, I, I, I but, agree, right? I agree. Yeah, it, it's a, what what that's a very she asked you a very pointed question. He gave a very rounded answer that doesn't testing, address testing, the question. testing. So that's that's, that's, something, that's something you're looking We're for. Here. Then, huh? I'm trying to I'm trying. I just got a donation about the rake. I'm trying to pull this up here, but let, let's keep this moving. She got to go soon. OK, and why would you, why did you leave Gigi? I just should have like pressed there but okay. in my life. Um, you know, I just yeah, I had other things going and I didn't, I just felt like that was, that's what was right for me. Okay. Um, I feel like I need to open it up to some questions. Does that seem like, yep. I can't even. Of and you know what, one, one other thing, you know, for anyone just to state, you know, in this interview, it's live. There were no predetermined questions. I didn't ask you to see any of the questions that you were giving me. You know, I showed up as my true and honest self and. You know that that's what that's what that's what I am, and that's what's important to me. Okay, so the overall sense is that you have to just answer some questions, um, apparently. So, Zamani, you also have to address this: Is it true if people like didn't eat the right foods or do the things that you told them to do that this is what would it? determine whether or not they were dropped in stakes or not? Absolutely not. While, while at the same time, if someone's continuously making poor decisions and being negative in their life, you know, that is something that, of course, you have to consider always because poker is a tough game. And for playing high stakes, you really have to be in the right frame of mind. So, you know, I'm the person who's putting up all the money. So, of course, you're going to have to make assessments if you think that person's actually winning in the game that they want to play because everybody in poker, they assess their skill much higher or better than it is. And just because they believe that they're good enough to play in a game doesn't mean that that's true. And I see myself as someone that understands a lot about poker. I'm, I think that I'm the best or one of the best ever. And I think that I'm someone that can make a good assessment of if a person's winning or not in that game. But at the same time, with no horses at any point, have I said, you know, you have to do this otherwise, otherwise this is what's happening. And I feel like you have to address the uh, toad poison situation i didn't want to focus on this but questions have been asked 
I mean, I've, I've never done any, I, I never did any of that with Martin. I've never done any psychedelics or anything with Martin uh, at the same time. I recommended him to, you know, I connected him to a person that, that was, um, was the shaman is real boys by another close friend that knew her for a long time. And this is someone that I recommended Martin to, to go see, to, to try to help him from, you know, just always being unhappy. And, you know, at that point he's going to go meet with someone and it's, it's his decision if he wants to go forward with that. It's just, you know, it's something like, you know, make a, a recommendation for someone to meet another person. And what happens there is, you know, an adult consenting of if they want to go ahead with it, when they're presented with all the information right there. Okay. Yes. Um, people Shaman's want to real. know, was there a romantic element to your relationship with Lauren? And is that part of what's kind of going on publicly now? Um, there was no romantic element, but at the same time, she did make multiple comments and even actions that started making me more and more uncomfortable, which I would guess that from her side, there probably is a feeling of that of, of romantic relationship that absolutely nothing ever happened with that. Okay. So circling back to the conversation we had about team viewer and VPN, and basically if you, if you aren't coaching people, then why do you have team viewer on your laptop? But I said it was to get, I use it to get into my, my home computer. I travel around all the time and you know, you could have down, you, you could download something that sits on your computer for a long time. I said that, you know, it's completely untrue that I would use team viewer to do anything unfold like in the game. And I'll, I stick with, with that too. Okay. And I guess, when you're talking about Zamani and you say like, if somebody's a losing player, obviously you're not just going to continue to invest in them. So if you can see that Lauren is also a losing player, what's the incentive to continue to invest in her? Well, I never actually invested in her. That's the thing. It was all, she was playing in these games. I never had any action of any games that she ever played actually. So I didn't invest in her. It was at the time when I met Lauren, she was playing in million dollar private cash games and losing a lot of money. And I saw her as a person who others were almost certainly taking advantage of her. You know, I saw her poker game was, you know, a much worse one than she saw it and I wanted to help her out. So her playing in these tournaments on GG were much smaller than the stakes that she was playing at that time. And I was offering her coaching as a friend that she never paid me a dollar to do any coaching. I never took a dollar. I never made deposit. a deposit. What do you think I, about I, that, Don? I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that he had her action. I think he clearly didn't. Why would he take her action? It doesn't make sense, but he did it to help her. He did. It seems like he did it to help himself, because if she plays, the games run. He has people under his agency, gets rake. His horses have action. Soft mm -hmm. games. He can play. People that that will beat her will play. So, I think it's kind of hilarious to say he did it to help her. She was obviously going to get butchered up in this game, and he set up a bunch of different ways he would personally profit off of. That's what it sounds like, yeah. As you as you laid out earlier, money and money and money and money and money. Yeah. Yeah. This this is this is this is interesting. The it's kind of it's it, yeah. it's kind of vomit inducing. I just tried right. to help her or whatever he said there. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to my man Scott Grease with the twenty dollar donation. Some moderator love to the two legends. Thank you, Scott. Much love to you, Beiruzi. Shout out for all the donations as well to you too. From Canada, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate all the love, Jamin, Big J, Vanessa K out there as well. What's up, guys? Great to see both of you too. Again, great to see everybody in the chat. The Thoris wins. Ben Allen, Justin, what's up, guys? From anything that she was involved in, it, these were, you know, it was. Yeah, I, I really liked Lauren at first, you know, and it was me trying to to help someone who I thought was a friend, who was very caring and giving, and yeah. And she ended up owing you money, for what reason? Well, she was because playing. Of the Sergei stuff? No, no, no. She actually, she won a lot of money on the Sergey stuff. She might've won like uh, somewhere in the one, a million to a million three range from the action that she free rolled off of Sergey. So all, so she, she lost $2.2 .2 million on GG of which she never paid. Then happened to win a bunch back on this action that I gave her and she didn't pay her remaining balance from the losses that she had. So her balance on GG is not her balance. It's on your balance. Yeah, I would loan, she, she borrowed money from me to play. So all of those losses that people document, she actually, she really didn't lose anything because she didn't pay that money. Okay. Okay. And you will categorically confirm or deny playing on Lauren Roberts' account? Yes. Deny. You definitely did not ever do that? No. Okay. Um... Let's just go into the chat and see if there's anything else. Kind of, kind of, why didn't he say it the first time? I don't understand. It's the same question. 
First time, did you play on Lauren's account? Mm-hmm. Second time, no. It's direct, yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's what you should have done the first. It's just, I don't know why it went around, went around the first time, but yeah, it's good, good response. Messing up. Um, Like She's trying to deal with the chat right now, and the chat is absolutely out of control with Glass. So it's not the most friendly chat during this interview, too, but for Sarah to deal with. Something I probably and other people to this shaman person. Uh, yeah, I myself uh, saw her, and some of my friends, some of my friends partook on uh, ceremonies that I personally had in Hawaii and Costa Rica. Okay. Um, yeah, people, man, the Lauren stuff. Okay. So I guess people are really wanting to know um, why you stayed partnered in this situation with Lauren for so long when it's obvious that you were owed money and that she probably wasn't going to pay. Well, you know, she was, she was living in a very expensive house. She was gambling millions of dollars when we met and always claimed to me having a bunch of money. And, you know, someone that was acting as if they were my best friend, I guess I was a bit naive and let it roll longer wow. than I should have. Damn, someone, listen, what, someone's cap here, right? Like one, could both sides be, <laughs> oh be my. I mean, this is the, I mean, we see, this is, this is, what do you think, Doug? Because obviously, right, well, someone's lying here. Either well, obviously it, it, the reason and, it would it actually it would be better for Ben if he just was more. I I actually think he could have been more direct in this spot and been like, "Look, she drove the games. It made me a lot of money that she played. I used the personal angle. That's not illegal. That's not cheating. It's just the reality of what happened." And then you'd be like, "Damn!" But at least he's being straightforward. But this, I was just naive. She took advantage of our friendship, dude. Uh, what? All of these games are running around her, and you have this system set up to make money off of it, including your horses playing in those games. Hmm. I was just so naive from our friendship. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot more going on to both sides of this than, than we have information on, and, and whatever was happening with these two. I mean, like you said, right, they're hanging out a lot. They're at a house. They're sleeping over. They're spending time. They're taking trips together. Then he's she's playing the high stakes in the games, and as she just said, She's gambling in these high stakes live games sometimes too. So she feels taken advantage of. He says he's taken advantage of. The Lauren Roberts thing overall, just based on what I've seen, with the exception of the way he tried to raise money for his company, which is not legal, in my opinion. And potentially if he did play on her account or not, still have it still remains to be seen what Lauren has to say about that. I don't think she's made a public statement on that front. Mm -hmm. It it just feels to me like most of the Lauren stuff falls under just personal nonsense. Mm -hmm. And, and unless, unless he played on her account and, and is willing to say so, and then also the way that she, he was trying to raise money from her, those, those two things, everything else is just kind of, she seemed, it seems like she potentially took advantage of the spot that I have to pay. And right. he took advantage of her basically being there to make money. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of the Lauren Roberts stuff isn't really that important or relevant to the story. Mm -hmm. I think what's more relevant to the story is what happened with Sergey. I think that's a key piece of this because Sergey was banned for RTA and Bryn Kenny did know that he had charts up on his screen while playing, according to the screenshot and discussion with Martin. I think that Bryn telling Martin someone's going to play with you today on your account, that's that's just so much more damning than I think almost any of this Lauren Roberts stuff. I feel like the, the Martin stories are just way more important and centrally focused to the actual cheating allegations here mm -hmm. instead of this Lauren Roberts story. I think I think it's it's relevant, but it, I think it's a little bit distracting compared to some of the core elements of the story. Yeah, it's, it's a really lot going on here. Like, it's not as simple as like, you know, this, 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 that. There's like, as you said, there's like layers of elements. There's backers for Bryn. There's 
operators Britain's working with, right? Like, well, what's what what's their response? What are they up to? You know what I mean? Like, GG Poker is this is they're one of, positioning themselves to try to be the biggest poker operator in the entire world. So, if this is what's going on with with Bryn, if Bryn's working with that, if any of this is happening, like. You know, well, what, what, I, I don't know what else has happened on the site, right? What else happened to our players? You know, they've been doing a great job building the ambassador team, building on content, building partnerships in the industry with World Series of Poker, Poker Go. So they've been doing a lot of great things for the community and for the industry. But if they're facilitating something like this at the higher stakes games to get action and to help people make money and to make money for the site, and that's how they do that, do that, you know. Is that an issue or should that, like, you know, that that's, those are some of the things I've always wondered because a lot of these things have, what I suspect gone on for quite a long time in the industry. So, so let's, let's finish this out, Doug. And then uh, let's, let's give us some wraps up thoughts and then let's let you get out of here to your meeting you got here. Okay. Um, what's, I guess there's questions also about the relationship with GG and were you getting rake back or in what way were you incentivized if you were um, not necessarily an ambassador anymore? I don't really see that as merit to answer. That's like personal business that I have with someone. And just, yeah, I don't feel like I, there's any reason to answer that. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Do you have other things that you want to share or get That's out like, there? Yes, by the way, in my opinion. Understanding about the situation? No, I mean, it seems to me, you know, everything important to me to discuss has been talked about so far. And I think it makes sense. Um, you know, you mentioned other people from your stable and people who can sort of vouch for you or vouch for the way things are, or the way things ran. I don't know if it might make sense at some point to get some of these people talking, supporting. Um, do you want? Do you want? You want to set up like an hour interview and we can rotate people in and out for five to ten minutes and talk? <laughs> Just like, uh, do like a um, chat I would, roulette. Yeah, I, I, would, I would love to do that. Actually, I would love to present you with all the people that I've done any business with in the past. You know years on GG and let them give from their own mouth the experience that they had with me. And if there was, and that I ever asked them to do anything wrong at any point, I would love to do that. All right. And, and some, some of the, you know, Martin choose, chose very wisely because he chose not to mention multiple of the most reputable people in the poker industry that I've done business with that are clearly, that clearly have been involved in no type of cheating. And, you know, he just, he tried his best to make me look as bad as he possibly could. So I would love to, to round up the team and the X team and, you know, let, the, let, let people hear it for themselves from these people and see, see what they believe. And I think, well, I think this is a, uncomfortable spot anyways, but um, do you, I, someone asked me, is there any bad blood between you and Doug at all? Or Oh, Doug, Doug, Doug clearly did this like out to get me, you know, he did an interview, the way, the way that he posted it in the title, you know, how he did an interview with someone with zero evidence who was completely uncredible and untrusted in the poker industry was clearly just him trying to make an attack at me or, you know, get, get some press and he doesn't, he doesn't care how, he, how he's going to do it. So. You know, I, I think Joey, have you ever say... heard people accuse me of these kinds of things before as a self-defense mechanism for things that they did wrong? I've never seen that. I've never seen someone do something wrong and then blame me for it. And by that, you mean you, we've heard that exact same thing before? A bajillion times? Yeah, exact same thing. Yeah, you're out, you're out for the views. Yeah, basically, the reason I hit my big chip behind my stack is because Doug is out to get me. Yeah. The reason why I sat on the couch and made great comments is because you know Doug's in it for the views, although we've settled that and we're mm -hmm. on to bigger and better things. Mm -hmm. The reason that Doug thinks I was multi-accounting is because he was multi-accounting with Jade Lama. That's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But basically, this is a classic deflection tactic where you make it about the other person. Martin came to you with a story. He posted his story. Clearly had elements of truth. He has screenshots of, the, of some of these instances. So you're saying you're, good not, story. you're not doing this because you're out to get Bryn Kenny. Is that what you're saying? Because I mean, I, I could see that on the surface, right? When I saw this initially, I got tagged on Twitter. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I know Doug and Bryn got beef. Like I, so I could understand if that was an assumption that people might have, but I just want you to be clear. If that's not the case, then, uh, then that's not the case. If I thought the story had no merit, I, I wouldn't have, have had him on the tell it. Okay. But it did have merit. And some of these things we know are true. So yeah. I think it was a very credible guest to have on mm -hmm. in terms of the story he had to tell. He was within the Brin organization. He has proof of someone playing with him to be ghosted in a tournament at high stakes. 
he's got basically first witness a first first view account of a bunch of these things happening Sergey RTA shamans psychics all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. now I don't like Bren obviously we've had beef in the past I, I don't understand his deal I think he takes himself super seriously all the time I think he does a lot of fake news posturing and I think he tries to act like a big shot cool I don't like Bren but regardless, I still try and tell the stories that I think are fair to tell. And I think the community would agree that this one was a fair one to tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've always liked Bryn. So, you know, I mean, a lot of characters in poker, right? I don't, I don't you know, they all act their own way. So I, I personally just accepted a lot of those guys in poker. And, you know, I enjoy the characters and the bravada and uh, the attitude they bring, right? Even though they got, they got big egos, you know, I, I personally, I don't mind that kind of stuff like that. I know a lot of people that do the, those kind of things and... You know, but obviously I can understand taking a different stance on that. And you guys had your own back and forth, you know, talking shit and stuff like that. So, you know, I know it's more personal on that level. But I, I, I just want to ask that question because I know people were wondering about that. Beiruzzi with the can- candy. Can- I also I, I also just Go have ahead. to point out, guys, when you message someone before a pod and say you're going to sue them. If certain criteria are met. It's a threat hmm. and they're trying to they're trying to blackmail you or maybe that's the wrong word but intimidate you into not doing the thing that you are going to do Mm -hmm. and so he sits back and acts like he's this innocent dude he's come after me a bunch of times and insulted me and whatever else there's all kinds of shady shit going on in his fucking organization one way or another people are getting banned people are getting ghosted we have accounts of this we have screenshots of this and then when someone's going to come forward with the story dog's in it for the views i'll sue you you're in it for the views Mm mm-hmm it's classic bullshit, dude. Mm-hmm. Over and over again. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be intimidated, Joey. The truth shall set you free. No, I'm not going to say that. But yeah, the point is, not afraid to take a story. Not afraid to roll with it. And I'm not afraid of the, the Bryn Kenny intimidation tactics slash Doug's just doing it because I hate because he hates me. Okay. Just want to make sure. I want to give a shout out to Beiruzzi from Canada. Can- Can- Canada 50. Thank you, Doug and Joey. You're doing good stuff for the community. Everyone else. RTA and cheating exists, but it's mostly in high stakes and small fields. No reason to panic. Rooster Booster is proof. Drinking and binking MTTs is still alive. Adios. I think that's a good point, too, by the way, is that a lot of these things aren't relevant in your local 1-2 game at the Golden Nugget or at the Horseshoe in Chicago, right? Like, a lot of these things in the tournaments that you play, none of these things are relevant. None of these things are are most likely going to apply to you, things you have to worry about at all. But if you are playing in certain settings, and of course, as you go up stakes and more money is on the line, then you, of course, do and should protect yourself in those situations and really learn exactly what's capable and what's possible out there as well. But do you think this is something that everyone should be worried about? Like now they hear this and they're like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? That's what I always think happens in some of these things is like, you know, is it happening in my game? I know a lot of people think that even though they're still going to play because poker is a great game. What do you think, Doug? You think that's something that is is not to be worried about in those games? Well, I think that there's always going to be an element of cheating in online poker mm-hmm. because there there are just so many angles that you can use to cheat. There's always going to be an element of cheating in live poker because there's so many angles that you can cheat. Po- poker is a game of information, and if you have ways to find answers or give information away, people will take advantage of that and use it to try and make money. Mm-hmm. It's, it's always going to be like that. It's why in poker you got to really try and protect yourself, keep an eye out, make sure you play in safe games. It doesn't mean online poker is not beatable. It doesn't mean that live poker is always rigged or online poker is rigged or anything like that. It just means you got to be careful about what, what situations you put yourself into because there were a bunch of winners in those GG poker games. Right. Did some of them run hot, I'm sure. But some of them probably were just careful with who they played with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some were probably playing Frog Theory Optimal. I mean, listen, I don't know. Let's finish this out and uh, let's get let's get our clearly show on the road. The, the moral code of journalism in his podcast, what did he say? or you know, gets gets some press, and he doesn't he doesn't care how how he's going to do it. So you know, I, I think I, I would say you know he clearly goes against the the moral code of journalism in his podcast that he does. <laughs> and you know, I, I have no bad feelings towards him, towards anyone really. I you know, I wish everyone the best. I hope that they can. Doug, what do you I mean? This, he has is, no this Ill, is directly about well, you, right? It, it, well, he just insults me for like a minute straight and it ends with, I have no ill will or anyone for him or anyone. Okay, bud. <laughs> By the me. way, Joey, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. 
What is that about? I, I saw that meme in, but I, I, I'm not caught up You were up there. It was in Mexico. Oh, no, just, never mind. It's okay. Okay. About it. Shout out to my little brother with the $10 donation. Tutu Andrew Cool. Shout out to my little bro. Working hard, as always. Just graduated school. Looking for a job in game design. And uh, we'll see if he gets a job with my company. Let's move on. Can find happiness in, in their life. And you know, if it makes them happy to put other people down, they'll probably realize one day like how, how bad that was actually for their life and how much... Bad energy that just continued circulating around them for it. Bad so, energy, you know, bro. I, did what he did. I got, can feel it circulating. I to hold on to no bad feelings, no bad thoughts. Um, someone who just, you know, I accept everything that happens and use it as a learning experience. You know, I think that I've got a lot of learning experiences from this process and things that are going on right now. And you know, I just stay to be grateful every day for, you know, for my life, for the blessings that I have, and for continuing to to stay in the light. Sounds like he's living so, a great I'm, uh, existence of life, or. Whatever it is, forget the memes. Got to remember my memes. Mm. Basically, scrolling through Twitter to find and to see what are the in our DMs. Dude, of course, my mouse is just like messing up. It's so annoying. And then I think we can just wrap it up. I hope. Okay. Oh, I like this question actually. If you could go back, what, if anything, would you do differently? Honestly, I think about that question a lot sometimes, and I'm really just so grateful for, for all the lessons that I've had and the understanding that I'm at at this point in my life. And I think that, you know, if you go back and you change something, it's a ripple effect and it would have a, a different effect on how you're. Okay, Joey, I can't talk about, I can't take Bryn talking about the butterfly effect here. I got to run. Is there any concluding statements that you'd like to make before we let Bryn continue to shine this light around us in a the most positive change in the history ever or whatever that statement was. All I got to well. say is I know you got to take off Poppy. And uh, yeah, I think our closing statements is uh, I guess we're going to wait and see what happens here. So maybe Bryn will do more interviews. And he said he would bring on people who would collaborate his story. And we don't know what Lauren's going to say. We don't know if anyone else is going to come out and talk. So it seems like right now we're at a holding point where we're waiting to hear more information potentially from other people out there who might have an understanding of what's happening. And uh, then from there, kind of take it from there. And I mean, maybe you have some other plans up your sleeve in terms of where you want might, might want to do or you might want to focus on. Maybe you want to share those with the people. We do. Joey, the only thing we got up our sleeves today is the, the guns. Biceps. Yeah, I know it's the guns. I know. <laughs> well, listen, guys, if you want to see Doug's content on his on his podcast channel, Doug Polk Podcast, Doug Polk Regular YouTube Channel, Doug Polk Crypto Channel, Doug Polk. I think he's got another channel related to other kind of videos too. So you to pick your poison, which Doug Polk you're after today. And uh, and yeah, man. Well, but once again, Doug, would, it, go ahead. Before I go, I just have to give it the, the chat a little background. When I showed up at the pod today, I just assumed, I assumed it was understood. It was going to be two bros, two tank tops. I came on. It was only one bro in a tank top, and it was me. <laughs> and this man said, "Hold on!" And he ran in, and he got his eat sleep PLO tank, and he ran back out to give you the good news here on YouTube. So, gotta give a shout out to Joe Ingram, rock, repping the tank and being back in the content streets. For all the fans in the chat, it's good to have Joey back doing some investigative journalism because at least then one of us cares about it. That's true. Listen, I, yeah, I take a, I take a much more not, you know, middle stance on these things right now, and we'll see them play out. So, guys, listen, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens, and uh, hopefully. This turns out great for everybody, but uh, we're going to see what goes on. $20 donation, by the way. Thank you very much, Michael, Joey, and Doug. What we do without you two, the best of online detectives. Very debatable. But uh, but yeah, listen, man. Thank you, everybody, in the chat. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. This is my first video in a long time. Appreciate all the love, all the support. You guys have showed me on social media as well. And uh, obviously, big shout out to Doug. He's been working hard on all his different projects as well, too. So we're all going to be keeping up with that. And uh, stay tuned for a podcast on Doug's channel we'll be doing where I'll talk about where the fuck I've been for the past 10 months and uh and yeah i think that's all i got doug if you want to follow us more for more what's happening follow doug at doug polk vids on twitter or me at joe ingram one and then also of course poker news will have more as well shout out to sarah herring and poker news team putting this together and uh i think that's where we stand doug do we have anything else we need to include in here or have we covered it at all we covered it man okay we did it today yeah doug once again another another great pod in the books here and uh, yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat. Much love. See all the comments. Appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. And uh, that's it. Take care. Peace out. Alex Duvall. Shout out to Alex Duvall. I think he uploaded a vlog with me and him on 420 where he did his first edible and I took him on a Vegas strip adventure. So uh, that's on his YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, that, that got me motivated to kind of come back getting poker. So see you guys later. Take care. Peace out. Adios. See you, Joey. See you guys. Peace. Peace.